All right, all right, all right. Guys, welcome back to another episode, episode 29 of the Intelligent Idea Talkers podcast for the week of November 26, 2017. I'm your host, D. This is Juice. It's your boy, Jay. And a special guest special commentator guest. on the cast. Can we get a round of applause? Who are Thank you? you? Thank Who you. Thank you. Would you please introduce yourself? Who are you? Stuff. Oh! Stuff. 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 Do we use a yeah. code name? Do we use... No. No? We'll just call you Stuff. That's right, cool. It's different. So, Steph. Steph Thanks Lovell. for joining us here on the cast, guys. Can we get a toast? Toast. What are we Dang. sipping on? We're uh, sipping on a number of beverages today for the special occasion. Got a little precast. Yeah, a little precast sippo. Uh, we got the Secco Strawberry and Raspberry Rosini. Mm, pretty uh, cool. It was, it was nice. good, actually. Yeah, I liked it. A little fruity, it actually. Refreshing. Yeah, refreshing. And, and you know, it tasted. came with this crazy top that made us think it was a champagne and it, it bottle. Tasted, it tasted seltzer. Is it, is it like, is there like a acidity to that? Uh, like a, I mean, right? Well, like, it didn't it taste like, taste like I had a, uh, like a similar yeah, yeah. taste. The back says, a deliciously and fruity specialty made with carbonated wine. There carbonated, you go, D. There you go. All right, strawberry All right. and red. Wait, look, the, that taste, man. Yeah, it tastes like, really good. Right? like, you become the connoisseur out of this junk. Yeah, it tastes a little seltzer. All right, and we got so, this uh, secondary, the Dublin Carolina Red. Is so, that something else? I'm not sure what that says. <laughs> I've been drinking too much to try to pronounce it. So, guys, here we are. Uh, episode 29. Like I said, November 26th, a couple days after Thanksgiving. Guess we're going to go around the table and tell everybody about how Thanksgiving was, man. So, or, you know, should we start off with Steph? Steph, Steph. Had, uh, go ahead. The ladies, perfect. Ladies, ladies, and you know what? Maybe before even introducing her, I should read her Thanksgiving menu. <laughs> Okay, because she definitely sent this to the group. Oh, you're right. Okay, so this is before <laughs> Steph really? even I'm has glad, a chance. Huh? Okay. You know what you have for things. Before Steph even even has a chance of uh, uh, introducing or telling us how her, her Thanksgiving was, let's go through her uh, Thanksgiving menu, all from scratch, mind you. Okay, scratch. all from scratch in quotations. Delicious. Vegan and guilt free. Mm. <laughs> LOL. Mm. I love okay, guilt. Okay, so appetizers: <laughs> biscuits with cranberry sauce, okay. deviled potatoes, okay. and mixed greens. Main course, veggie pot pies, side dish, potato bread dinner rolls, cornbread muffins, cinnamon roasted acorn squash, Mm. creamy wild (laughs) rice and mushroom casserole, Mm -hmm. green bean casserole, corn casserole, sweet potato casserole. You name it. Garlic mashed potatoes, (laughs) mac and cheese, apple stuffing, maple roasted carrots, condiments, cranberry sauce, gravy, pomegranate, drinks, sweet autumn tea. Crown Royale. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Desserts. Ever. Sweet potato yeah. pie. Oh. Mini apples. Vanilla ice cream. Oh, Bam. That's, Lord. That is a Thanksgiving menu if I, ever, scratch. If I like, ever read one. From, from scratch. scratch yeah. From scratch. Wow. Like, so, Stephanie. Absolutely with that, guilt free. With that introduction, how was your Thanksgiving? It was okay. Did you actually make any of that stuff? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. Really? I'm really tired after. I bet it was. I bet it was a lot of work. You put a lot of time and care and effort into your food, into your dishes, man. I I've did. noticed that. But it matters to me that that it you know that I'm cooking from scratch and that I'm using fresh ingredients, and that I'm not eating a bunch of crap that the government or whoever is trying to pump into you. I'm, I'm telling you, man. Trying to pump people. And you, you know what I said before? Like changing somebody's eating habits is like changing a religion. It's hard to do, and people are just used to what they're used to. But well, I've done that too. <laughs> no, but I mean. It's it's one one step at a time. Like if 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 that's something that you want to do, you just take it one thing at a time, and then you'll eventually get to what it is that you're trying to do. You have a lot of guests come through. Uh no, I don't. That's cool. Man. Keep the family. When you keep say that, like you're making vegan food, there's not like a line that people don't. Well, well if you all make, I know is you didn't live, if you didn't live so far away, I definitely would have been through that, Joe, man. It was just, dude, you know. I would be expecting an invite, you know, for the cat. You need to stay on 95. If you make, like, I vegan food. I never want to stay on 95. 95 is ridiculous. Uh, Look, if you make vegan food and American food at the same time, then you'd have a lot more people that can Well, it is. It's American food. I'm not saying. I'm, I'm just yeah. a joke. And, 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 and Americans I think, like ham. Actually, I think it's really important and that you, you would throw up the side of ham. actual food that you would find at this point in time versus, like, trying to eat a bunch of things that are from all over the place. Mind you, it's funny how a lot of things um, like cinnamon and nutmeg and mm-hmm. all these things are associated with Thanksgiving because all of those come from all like these Like pumpkin spice and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's really interesting when people are anti-immigration and all these other things uh, because you sure love food from all over the place. Pre- you know what I'm saying? Tell them. So that's just my... <laughs> uh, talking about economics and like 
political opinion, <laughs> racial opinion is two different things, right? Because like you can say you want to put up a wall to block Mexico, but we love Mexican food. You know what I mean? Like Mexican so, food is Taco economic. Tuesdays. It makes it makes economic <laughs> sense to sell that here. You can like, make money off it. You cannot take cilantro away from me. <laughs> Well, look, that list sounded awesome. I want to ask about the, um, what is this, the uh, <laughs> roasted, cinnamon roasted acorn squash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What the, f- I don't like squash in the first place, but how does actually, that even taste? Actually, it's really, really good. And acorn? It, it, like actual acorns? The, the acorn, acorn squash. squash. Not actually. Oh, I, I oh, thought it was yeah. acorns too. Because yeah, like, I was. Oh, no. I've heard like people use you know like acorns to make bread and different kinds of food and stuff. Okay. Well, acorn squash, <laughs> like when you when you cook it like that, it, it reminds me of um, kind of reminds me of a potato a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's really really yummy, and squash is awesome because you can you can use it. A million different types of ways. You can make it savory. You can make it sweet. You can turn it into a pie. You can you mash eat, it. You know, you eat. You know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, no, you can you mash can. it. You yeah. can mash it. Like if you think about pumpkin pie, that is a squash. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's true. You know, it's squash can be turned into different things. That's I would have loved it. About, I would have loved to have tasted it. I would have loved it. I would have loved this. Do you have any leftovers at all? Really? Everybody ate all the pumpkin. Could have brought something in. Squash. Do the cast of her place next time. Hey, we can bring the mic. Hey, it's actually it's it's funny because it's like when you sit there and you're making all this food. I have a family of five, so it's like they punish it like super Mm -hmm. quick. So even though it's like you make these big dishes, you're like, oh, this will last. Like we're almost through with leftovers at this point. Yeah, 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 that's true. A little further into the week. I feel you on that. So other than that, your Thanksgiving was okay though. Yeah, it was just you know exhausting. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I was really happy to sit back and drink some Crown Royal. Yeah. Relax. It's a lot of anxious times, anxiety, man. So, what about you, Jay? How was your Thanksgiving, man? It was good, man. I spent time with my in laws, just hanging out. You know, the usual annual celebration of, you know, family and friends gathering together. Um, I mean, me personally, though, I think it's. I actually wrote a Facebook status on this where I thought it was kind of ridiculous where we as a society designate just one day essentially to give thanks. Where, mm-hmm. like, you know, why don't we just be thankful every day kind of thing? If we treated people the way we treat, you know, strangers on Thanksgiving, how wonderful, you know, society would be, you know, every day, you know, we're just complimenting each other, helping each other out, you know, people who are more, you know, less fortunate than we are, Mm -hmm. giving them back to the community, you know, that'd be a nice place. But then, you know, the day after, literally, or the night of Thanksgiving, we have like Black Friday, we have all these crazy deals. The night of, man, I heard people just out right after dinner. Before before getting trampled, people, like there have been... People are dying on fighting. Black Fridays and fighting. I'm like, come on, man. First like, of all, I think it's ridiculous that anything is even open on Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you're really taken away from family time. Mm. A lot of people mm. are forced to be at work on those days. And that's e- economics. absolutely ridiculous. Economics. Uh, you don't have... Yeah. Right. But if there wasn't a demand, if there wasn't a demand, then they wouldn't provide it. And I, I wonder, thing. though. like, is Was there a demand for there's, that? Because it wasn't always demand. like this. So you always have to wonder, like, was this... Is this the 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 bigger company trying to bring in more money? Because that's all I see it as. Well, like they're just know, trying to works. bring in more money. Yeah, and people will go because they decided. Oh well, we're gonna open up on the day of Thanksgiving now. Especially if you're cooking, because a lot of times it's like, <clears throat> oh, made cooking. Oh, I forgot so and so ingredient. Oh, that does but happen to me. If I forgot so and so ingredient, then you gotta go without it. I'm that's just it. not using it. I made like, a point to do I'm that. I'm not this, going yeah. out. And I made my list. And I went out there and got what I needed. And if if I need something extra, then I really don't need it. Mm-hmm. Like we're not making it because I personally I'm not going to contribute to the fact that people are stuck at work. I'm not going to help to create that mm-hmm. demand. And I live my life that way. Where I if if I'm going to be a part of a commerce system, then I'm going to create demand for the things that I want. Absolutely. Well, I mean, the holidays creates this air of like. It's already an anxious country anyway. People are anxious in general throughout the year. And the holidays, everything is heightened, right? So a lot of people, maybe some people don't mind as much working on Thanksgiving because they maybe they don't have a lot of family or maybe they weren't celebrating with anyone. A lot of people get depressed around this time of or year. Or time and a half day. Yeah, and they kill themselves, you know? Everybody's got family around them. and So it's a mixed bag. But, I mean, it's unfortunate, not just for the holiday, but the fact that that people have to work so ridiculously mm-hmm. hard. That people have to put so much energy into going to work that they really can't even think about anything else, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Parents aren't home with their mm-hmm. children to take care of their children, to mm-hmm. nurture their children because they're so busy. You have to work to in order to make... Both parents have to work now. Yeah, they have to work now. 
Unless you just, you know, especially if you're middle class or let's say lower middle class, which I imagine most people are, both parents have to work. And that has an effect on the family. It has an effect on how people or their children are brought up. The psyche you know? of and the I, children. Yeah, exactly. the psyche of the children. It really does. I grew yeah. up in a household where my mother actually stayed home with me. <clears throat> and the moment that she went back to work, I was 10 years old. I should have been okay. But it crushed me when my mom went to work. Yeah. And because you're taking that, that nurturing parent out of the home and they're supposed to be there. And you're and she exhausting them. She had to go them. and do it. She had to do it because she had to make money. We had bills to pay. Mm-hmm. And my entire upbringing was focused on man i need to grow up so i can make money because yeah. there will be bills to pay you mm-hmm. know what i mean and you're not focused on all the that's the impression you're getting things in as life. a kid yeah you see your parents having to work you're like wait is that all that there is to growing up yeah i better get a job i better mm-hmm. make some money because you have to provide for your family and then and yourself you know but yeah. the funny thing is, but when like, you're the child when you're, in the family, it's like, when you're talking wow. about provisions, provisions really aren't what you think it is. Like, yeah, okay, you know, there are the required things that we have to maintain. We have to live in a home because there are laws that say that we can't live anywhere else. Everything is owned. Well, not because of the private laws, land. but because you want to provide a shelter for your family. You but know? it's it. When you think about it, it's all it is about the laws because if you decided like, that what you didn't, styles of homes if could you didn't want to housing? live in this type of home anymore, and you want to create your own, you want to do something else then you got to own that land first before you can do anything and even if you own it you have zoning laws and you have all these laws that you have of course to, but would you rather live in like a with, house you cannot live the way that you want to live would you rather live in a house or you want to live in like I could live what, in a cabin. I could totally live in a tree. I could live in a tree. Sometimes, sometimes you see some of the homes. You could homes. live in a tree house if you wanted to. I could totally to. live in a tree house. <laughs> well, I'm saying, like, based on these laws. Sometimes you right. see some of those economic Talk homes about freedom, where, like, the where? bed right, before the no wall and, like, the steps pull out, you know, and, like, just, like, this small house. Yeah, what's that? They, don't they have a show? Yeah, tiny houses. Yeah, yeah, right. Those and, are really cool. I mm, think they are. awesome. But... I don't know. Once again, if, if you want something like that, you still have to comply with whatever the right. rules are within within that particular Actually, area. what I was going to say is, like, yeah, there, I remember um, reading a couple years ago, um, or even recently, like, there's this woman in uh, Florida where she wants to live off grid, mm-hmm. and she was collecting rainwater, mm-hmm. and she was trying to use solar power, you know, panels and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And she got sued. Because you're legally not allowed to collect rainwater. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and also, the electric company was like, yo, like, you have to pay, like, taxes on your electricity, even though you're using solar power. Mm-hmm. And, like, they, she actually lost the court cases. So then people are saying, well, who owns, like, the rain then? Who right. owns, like, right. all this shit? And like, how does one own it? rain? And so, how does one tell you For, that, for us to that live off grid, that's crazy, like... It should be allowed. Why should, why should it? it be? At the very least. I guess like, it depends who owns the land. Who owns the and land you're right. the there, is falling on. There it is. Like, that's what it comes down to. Who like, owns the land? Where we live at. P- normal people like us, mm-hmm. common man, doesn't own their land. I, I, I hate to bring up, like, history, but, like, really, though, who owns the land? If you go back to, like, the Native Americans and stuff, mm-hmm. right, they were here first. So how are you going to say, like, oh, we own this now? You can't go to, like... You know, another country and plant your flag and be like, yo, this is mine now. And you would well, think, apparently, yeah, you can. You can. apparently, you can. Apparently, you can. But, but, but that's wrong, though. That's wrong. It so, is wrong, so, definitely. Like, you would think, like, regardless of the land, like, it's rain falling from the sky, right? So it's, it's like water from heaven, right? Well, that's kind of like water waves. Like, Do you know that, the like, rivers and, and, and lakes and ponds, these all belong to someone, and you can't just access them when you want mm-hmm. to. Oh, Even yeah. though it's a river, that's why I say like, you have to have fishing own. licenses. Yep. You, uh, you have to, you have mean, to pay said, into well, those fish, things like that. Licenses, or that. That's a whole different thing because mm-hmm. licenses really are important. If you had everyone fishing at one time and whenever they want to, then the fish cannot repopulate. You're taking out too much at one time and then you're ruining. It's kind of like what the ocean is going through right now. I don't and think you that don't want that. At all. You really People don't want fish. that in your in your fresh water. Regardless. People will fish. So the, let, also, so you, bringing that point up too. Of course, this is a nuanced issue. I don't know how we even got to this topic, but anyway, th- welcome to the Intelligent <laughs> Idea Talking Podcast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but we um, have no answers. Right, we have no answers. We got more questions, but you know, of course, this is a nuanced <laughs> issue because we need zoning regulations. Yes. Like we need laws, we need the compliance laws, we need safety regulations That's true. for people to to have because people will by necessity, by hook or by court, they will have a, a dwelling place and it may not be up to standard, it may not be up to code, it may be more dangerous for them to live in this particular situation than if we had regulations that would uh, 
require I don't know and that's and that's certain building style yeah, that though it, that to protect it. it too in the event of an earthquake or in the event of a rainstorm exactly. or whatever. I heard zoning something. laws are it's a nuanced zoning thing. laws are important, but I think that um, zoning and you know and just denying um, the the fact that first of all we have a changing climate people don't like to talk about that um, just denying the things that are going to occur very soon. Oh, you mean um, the Chinese hoax? <laughs> that's, I mean, it's, you have to be able to, to give people choices. And, and that's the thing is that I don't like living in a situation where I feel like I have no choices, that I'm forced to do exactly what you want me to do. And then I can't even raise my children the way that I want to raise my children. Yeah. I heard something before, like the only like animals on the planet Earth who talk about freedom and claim to be free are human beings, but we're acting actuality. We're not free. Like you're not as free as a bird, right? Well, or you're not as free as a crocodile, well, first right? First of all, how could like you... you do have certain standards that you have to meet, right? Expected standards through society, right? Everybody's expected to have a house. You're expected to get a job, join society, be a member of that, right? But what about the just the basic laws of surviving, survival, right? Like if you they're not able to pay for that house and live in that home that you pay for and pay taxes on, you're going to find a place to to dwell and right and to survive, right? Like yeah, that just goes down to your human instincts. I so mean, you just think about like locally, Dale City, like all the people that were living in the woods. You know, <laughs> a lot of them got kicked out because they had something right behind the right behind my store. Issue in Northern Virginia, mm-hmm. it's a huge, huge issue. It's, it's a huge issue everywhere throughout the country that, 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 that yeah. a lot of people have struggled with, and especially in places that where you have a lot of money. You mm-hmm. would think that oh this is a this is a to do place or whatever, but I've been in Santa Monica where it's gorgeous and there's all these mm-hmm. rich homes and it's surrounded by homeless people living under the bridges. Yep. And under because you you, you are go to only, San Francisco, and you're only helping L A. They got tent cities. You're only helping yep. one type of people and you're not helping everybody. And they I'm, had a tent city right at the complex behind Old Country Buffet in Woodbridge, and all them dudes got kicked yeah. out. They said that they didn't something about the power company because they were right by one of the power towers or whatever it is. And I mean, aside from the trespassing <coughs> issues, when it comes to um, getting into a homeless shelter, like if you're an adult, if you're just an adult and you don't have children with you, yeah. it's almost it's hard for it's adult almost males. impossible. And plus, you don't... to get into a homeless shelter, it's like a first come first mm-hmm. serve thing, and they don't have a lot of space. So. If you don't get there fast enough, and then you have to comply with all of their rules, and sometimes their rules don't They have a background check, and then also they have assessments, and then it also comes down to availability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's fine. You want to keep everybody safe, but availability is probably the biggest thing. I mean, you don't have enough room, right? And then the same people come back night after night, and it's not, maybe a lot of times, not their fault that they're homeless. All this from, we're talking about giving thanks. Okay, so let's finish the table. Juice, (laughs) how was your Thanksgiving, man? Uh, (laughs) My Thanksgiving was good. Like, my family came down and... I heard y'all uh, had tilapia. We did. <laughs> Dude. Steph is like, oh, I, I love know, tilapia. I just, I just totally threw up in my mouth. I'm sorry. The scene, that's, why, that's why you sorry. don't have anybody over Don't worry, Steph. It was vegan tilapia. You can't it, was it was amazing. It was amazing. You can't be throwing so up while people trying to eat. It's not a good thing. I'll tell you, though. But, uh, yeah, we had that. Um, plantains. Uh, my parents brought mm, a turkey. Uh, and... Uh, and stuffing and it was yeah it was really traditional um claudine made a uh a a traditional rwandan dish called uh isobe isombe i know i'm saying it wrong but uh it was a it was, it was like a it was banging, yeah it was right? like a no, dude it was, <laughs> it was banging that's what matters yes it was so banging. it was a good thanksgiving you know it was just a fam kept it small uh nice. we do we noticed we need a big table because you know, All the more food, or less a ball sitting plates. on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing living in an apartment. But so. my Thanksgiving was good. Yeah. Um, same thing. Sisters came over, ate a bunch of disgusting food. As Steph was saying, oh, um, yeah. and macaroni and cheese. Meat. It just wasn't even. Oh, I couldn't even believe I was just dripping with cheese and with gravy and mashed and potatoes. Mac. And it was just Dairy. disgusting. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Oh, Collard greens. Oh. And, oh. God. Oh my god! Think about the GMOs. Oh, they had the ham I'm serious. That, that stuff is really scary. <laughs> like that stuff is really scary, though, Steph. And I do respect you for, you know, trying to change your eating habits because a lot of times I listen to like Jay Widener. Um, he's like an author. Like a and, uh, no, he's an author, and uh, you know, just talks about like 
how they try to manipulate our genetic code through the foods that we consume. Like that's why like a lot of the food industries are being monopolized, right? Because they want to like it, the chemicals you ingest when you eat, because everybody has to eat, right? So the chemicals you ingest will kind of like code your genetics or your brain, right? Because think about it, those chemicals you ingest daily are passed on to your children. Who is you know? they? Right. The food companies. I right? mean, hey, I don't, I don't no, deny right. any conspiracy. Well, I mean, food but... companies. Think about who owns food. That's why farmers <laughs> yeah. get. That's why they get mad at farmers for collecting their own rainwater. I gotta water. throw this out there. I was so I'm reading this book, Sapiens, and so it talks about how, you know, how previously for like million years humans were hunter gatherers, foraging, foraging mm-hmm. sites. We would move around in bands and we would gather food and eat from. The, the areas we were in at the time, and then we'll move on. Well, as soon as we realized that, like, grain, particularly wheat and other foods that were easily uh, uh, harvested. Cart- cultivated. Yeah, and cultivated, yeah, easily cultivated, that once we got Step those, that's, that is when we started started Booyah, settling in Booyah. areas, Booyah. right? And started Booyah. hoarding foods. And, and that was, you know, led to the population boom for uh, humanity and all these other things. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, look at, like, this is... This was way before these corporations existed, right? right? Like stuff like that. And in a way, the the book pointed out a, a point or a perspective where it was saying that you know, if if you're gauging success of a species by how much it reproduces and how much it spreads throughout the world, then again, grains and and rices and cereals and all these things have used humanity to their benefit. And in that way, they have moved from a small region to covering the entire. Mm-hmm. Goddamn planet, right? Okay. So well, they said if, you're, if that's your gauge, that. if you're if they're adding your if that's your gauge for success, they said something about like corn, like the corn industry, corn okay. production. Right? Let's let's a add lot some of the, accuracy. Hang on, let me let me this. get this in before you because you're gonna put, you're gonna try to correct me and I'm okay. You know what? You go first, then because you go try to correct me, I'm gonna correct you. All right, all right. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm gonna correct you right now. Both okay. knowledge. Let's let's talk about grains. Master so, Gardener. <laughs> the first thing that I will say is that people, the way that we eat now is not the way that we are that we have evolved to eat, and Agreed. that's why we are all not we all, but a lot of us are struggling with health issues is because we're eating things that we have not developed an ability to eat, and it goes all around. You know what I mean? Um, if if you grew up in you know if your if your people came from a cold climate. You didn't have access to a whole lot of greens. You didn't have access to a whole lot of a whole lot of fruits and vegetables, etc. You eat more meat in your diet. You eat more things that are available to you. Okay. Um, the same thing goes for for you know people that come from Africa or people that come from Asia, etc. Like you have evolved to eat. You have adapted to eat the things that came from your environment. So when you that's a whole Doctor Sebi thing. When you've now moved into a new environment. Where you have all this food at your, you know, back in college, just whatever, whatever you want it. Um, but that doesn't mean necessarily that those are the foods that your body can handle. Like when when you talk about gluten free, a lot of people laugh at, oh, you know, gluten free, haha. You know, all of a sudden <coughs> everyone's allergic to wheat. It's not that everyone's allergic to wheat. Wheat in itself, wheat came from a colder climate. Its origins were in a colder climate. It's not something that um, that. You know th- that everybody has adapted to eat. Mm-hmm. You know, personally, I have a hard time eating it, so I avoid it because I don't process it well. And you have to kind of you can you have to figure out where you are. You know, a lot of us are, are very mixed up with different things, and you don't really know where you are in the, in the state of evolution. You don't know where you are, and you have to try it and see. Try it, see how your body reacts to it, and if your body doesn't react positively to it then that's not something that you should be eating because it's not something that you have evolved to eat. How some people are lactose intolerant, severely exactly. lactose intolerant, or, that's, that's, or gluten. That's I have a gluten big allergy deal, that, especially like that. when it comes to um, you know, people that have descended from, from Africa and other places like that. I, I would have a question, like, what, like, how long ago would this merge that you're talking about would take place, right? Like you say people from a cold weather climate will get... They're not used to eating grains and stuff like that because like one kind people have been trading and, you know, um, testing different foods, growing foods for hundreds of thousands or whatever it is years now, right? So I, th- I think the human 
body would have some kind of way to adapt to different foods, maybe. I think the real danger from today's food productions come from, like I said, a lot of these corporations control food production, right? So they add a lot. They do, Think about a genetically modified piece of corn or apple or something like that, right? Like when you go to the store and see this bag full of apples, Love that's not how apples stuff. appear in nature, right? Like you'll have smaller apples, bigger apples, but these apples being genetically modified, they're all made to grow big, you know? But that's, that's where the danger in a lot of this comes from because the meats have added steroids, the plants have added fertilizers, and all that stuff. You know, and, well, okay, and so that's, 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 that's the of, danger. That's, part that's of where the human sickness and ingenuity and comes from. Like a, that, a lot of that is absolute human ingenuity. Like mm-hmm. GMO is, isn't something that came up in the last fifty years. Right. We've been GMOing shit mm-hmm. for a thousand, three thousand, four thousand years, right? And human agriculture is chemically, not very old. chemically. Right. Corn. You, I mean, look at corn. We have been omnivorous. Foraging for a majority of the human existence, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to question. So when, when you say like they're 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 trying to change our genetic structure based on how they're mass feeding people, right? Like I get that in a way. Foods do have chemical reactions. Like yeah. our bodies are chemistry machines. We're constantly the way we process one thing is different way we process another and has different reaction on our brain. But at the same time, you have to look at the fact that we have not had enough time to evolve a new digestive system, Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. So the fact, but that's the thing. Well, like you said before, we are mixed up. We have not had time to evolve a completely new digestive system where we only exist exist on grains and rices and and meats or or particularly like what cow and chicken Mm -hmm. and... Do you think that's an American problem? No, no, no. Is this an American problem? Maybe like Europeans are more traditionally used to eating what they eat. No, no, China, their their food stuffs are completely different than mm-hmm. ours. Like what they normally eat on a regular basis. And but this is this is what about... they use to mass produce mm-hmm. to feed all of the people. Aside from the aside from the it's obvious of, okay, these crops came from this place and these crops came from that place, you have to consider that the processed food and how much American children are exposed to sugar. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's the thing. And yeah. it's like it's like no one is I mean, very few people are actually eating real food to begin with. So Salts too. When you're talking about struggling with um, with weight and health issues, etc., this all has to do with the fact that nobody's eating real food to begin with. Let alone talk about the foods that you're adapted to. Mm-hmm. That's a whole different thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? The health issues are coming from not eating real food. Period. You know, you're not you if you're not getting antioxidants, you're not getting. You know, your body wants to break down. Air will actually break your body down. Do you know that? Like mm-hmm. it actually breaks your body down. Oh. And it, like your body will decompose when to, exposed to air. You have to constantly, constantly introduce antioxidants into your oh. system. You gotta and, keep moisturizing. Too. No, and that <laughs> lotion, shea butter. You you have is to. Is lotion an antioxidant? The thing is, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Humans, I don't know <laughs> humans heal themselves just like plants do in a sense. But the the thing is, plants have had a longer time to evolve than humans had. You know, when you're talking about humans, what are you talking about? Uh, Monkeys. You're, you know, we've... Uh, Great and, apes. And as far as how long how long humans have been alive, how long plants have been alive, and then how long the earth has been alive, we are just a snapshot in time. We're, we're like, and it's hard for us to think past what we can see now because our lifespans are so short. So what do you You can believe- look outside right now and almost every tree you see will live longer than you. What do you yeah. believe the real human origins are then, right? Like you said, the Earth has been around. This is like a total off-the-wall question. You didn't have to go all, <laughs> all, all the way. Yo, no, right? This is, this is, like, oh, right, shit. But, right, so, I guess you, I'm going to throw this just, list away. Because <laughs> we didn't to do Colin Kaepernick and nobody. But <laughs> I'm just asking, though, like for you personally, right? Like mm-hmm. where do you believe we came from? Because you said the Earth and plants have been around longer than we have. They had right. a longer time to evolve. Where did humans come from then, right? Do you believe we were dropped in? Is there really? something to the whole Nibiru I, theory, right? Think, or do you think that like we you, evolved you here? <laughs> do you think that we evolved from like monkeys and apes? And monkeys. We just well, we, we cultivated here. First of all, here. I think I think it's quite a cop out to sit to to say oh evolved from apes etc. No, apes and humans evolved from the same ancestor. Mm-hmm. We didn't evolve from apes. Every not everything apes. branched out from from its own origins. Not 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 necessarily because we're related to apes. We're related to everything on Earth. If you look at us genetically, we are related to plants. We are related to everything on this Earth. The same things that can be found in the human body, the same things that make up the human 
you know, DNA strand can be found in outer space. You know what I mean? You can find that in a space Yeah, because rock. we're all, we're made of stars, okay? Like this, if you want to go there, like, oh, here's the thing. So if, if you want to talk about the, the, Carbon. the origins and all these other things, first of all, nobody has an answer to that. Nobody has an answer. Right, and that's the scary part. We don't answer know. to that. But the thing is, people spend so much time thinking about an origin, like everything has to come from something. When why can't things just exist because that's how they evolved to exist? That's, like, that's, that's not how. That's, so not that's how, what I think happens. That's like, not how logic things happens. Just evolve. Things I, happen for a reason. So no. either somebody did it, or there was a specific event that led to this. Somebody who like that it thing. doesn't matter if somebody did it, but there was a specific event that led to this. If you thing come now. from the premise so that things happen, happen for a reason, form the human being then, okay. So but if you, know you don't what, come from you know the premise that things happen yes. for a reason, if you come from the premise that things exist because what the fuck else is there to do, then. I mean, if it you doesn't look have at to it, have a reason. Yeah. Look like, at it from a progress. scientific perspective. What is what is the thing that puts everything together? What is what is the thing that makes all matter matter? Okay, uh, it's gravity. Oh. Gravity, <laughs> gravity, gravity, gravity. <laughs> Everywhere you go, Jesus. In, in 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 the solar system, it's gravity. It's all about gravity. There's so. no gravity in outer space. There's gravity when you have mass, like a planet or no, a star. No, no, there is gravity. There's gravity. <laughs> in outer space. Yes. So gravity is created. From my, uh, I thought uh, gravity was created when there was a mass object that caused a gravitational pull. That, like that a creates the or gravity. Star. So if you have something with a mass in space, then you have gravity in space. And there are millions, billions of things in space with large, humongous masses. But there's also more. So that is gravity. Mm -hmm. space and there is That's space. dark matter. You have dark matter and you have gravity. And these are the things that create. What's these on the, the other creators. side of the black hole? What's on the other? Who knows? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You know what's you know crazy is like, I would love to believe that we were dropped off here by like some ancient alien race, right? Who like kind of grew the human species into this thing, maybe like a servant, a like Nibiru or something. Yeah, right. And like we were, we were planted here, and I would love to believe that, like the Sumerian tablets and whatnot. But like, Prometheus, think about like the yeah. infiniteness of fun. space, man. Like, it's hard I to have even a hard fathom. Time. But I, have a hard I want to meet them. First of all, space is infinite. This is an yeah. opinion, and this, I, if, is, this is my I opinion. Thought that was how it was. Yeah, Think okay. about anywhere you've been that's big New York, big, tall skyscrapers, the Grand Canyon, whatever it is, Niagara Falls. Space is. Infinite. Yeah, it's just. You can't even fathom it, man. In my opinion, I think the God theory is very primitive. I think that it's. That's. It's. It's a real. It's really easy to be like, oh, this, you know, knocked on the floor. God must have wanted it that mm -hmm. way. You know, when when you go back and think lazy. that, it's like, okay, well, you know, when, when the earth was flat and when all these other things, you know, when, when people really, when the witches yeah, did wait, everything. And, and it, the earth is flat. Okay. okay. Can we just, mm, yeah. it's right. flat earth theory. It's so not a thing. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's all of these things that it's just like, it's just primitive thinking. It's like you didn't have the technology at that point in time to think further than this. And your lifespans are so short that you couldn't understand anything that's bigger than you. And that's the same thing here. It's like we could try so hard to think and figure it out, but we can't because we don't even live long enough to figure out what, Here's what's going to happen to anything. It's important that we try. And even if those primitive attempts were primitive, as we call them, they're only primitive from our perspective because in... 300 years, our perspective is going to be primitive as shit once they figure out what holds uh, atoms together, right? Like, or whatever. But what I'm saying is we have to keep trying. Like, even if those attempts are flawed, we have to keep trying. And it's important that we let go of old ideas as soon as we can understand that they're exactly. now no longer valid or useful. Mm -hmm. It's hard It's hard to let Observable go of what you sciences. think that you know. We, I mean, I don't want to turn political, but that's same way I feel about laws mm -hmm. and legislation, laws. things that no longer oh, yeah. apply. A lot of but laws that's a valid, change. That's laws a valid evolve. point. You this know, I have point. children in school, and I've looked up the SAT scores to see, okay, well, where do my children stand? And you know what? What you see is a breakdown. It's a racial breakdown. They literally break it down by race mm -hmm. and say, oh, well, these children are doing, you know, this, this, and, you know, this well in this percentages yada 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 and it's always the black children and the hispanic children that are struggling in school why why is it that they're struggling maybe it's because you know like right now they're we're midway through the year mm -hmm. and they're just starting science in in my child's class because you know they had to cover history first and for some reason history is more important than science 
I can't begin to fathom why history would be more important than science because is important, you can actually learn history through science. You don't need a whole class for history. Mm-hmm. Just learn science. I feel you on that. History is important, though. History is important, though. Like, when people misunderstand history, you misunderstand your commonplace. So Victors I, tell I, the history. I, I agree. I was going to say Victors tell the history. That's true. Mm-hmm. So, so, you have to have a, so, like, you, know, you never hear the other perspective of, exactly. of history. You They're still care. teaching that Egypt was, you know, the first civilization. Like, come on. They, that's it, That's been proven time and time and again that Egypt was not mm. the first Sumerians? Speaking Sumerians. of like laws and everything being outdated, the educational system is really outdated sometimes mm-hmm. too. I mean, and it depends on who's writing the safe. history books. They gotta no. play it safe. You Who can't are they experiment teaching to the and kids. why? It's all propaganda. You know, when when the difference well, between... Well, what's the propaganda in I've saying children, that Egypt was first? Like, I have who had, benefits by not giving Sumerians their props? I have had like, kids I think they gotta in play private it school safe. and I've had kids in public school and I can tell you that there's a big difference between what they're teaching in private school and what they're teaching in public schools. Private school scares me. It depends on the private school. You mm-hmm. have to, you know, every school is going to be different. But when you're talking about teaching from a logical perspective and from new technology, you know, that's not something you're necessarily going to get in public school. They're going to try, but it takes a long time for people, for a school board to even approve a subject that you're going to be talking about. Because it's a very nuanced issue. Like, it's not easy to be like, you know what? Again, for the Sumerians versus Egyptians. Sorry, Sumerians got it. They were there first. Well, how about in another 10, 15 years, they'd be like, oh, wait, it turns out this other civilization was first. But at, like, that, at what point you do you to, flip the tape? At what point do you flip the script? The they'd be like, oh, sorry. That's just it. You just have to teach the new information. If you were wrong, teach it the right way. That's kind of like we were taught that, you know, Pluto is a you. planet and now Pluto is not a planet. I understand, but I'm looking at the the larger system. Like, it's not going to move. When you human, have a ship, it's a ship. You can't just change direction like this. Human beings are misled. It's going to take time. And misled and mis you know, informed in education and politics and I mean, who's telling the history? Who's writing these history books? You know the what I mean, victors, right? right? The I victors. mean, it'd almost be better if you teach a kid history, but where'd you learn your history from, you know? History itself is like a touchy thing. Because like, cause like Steph said, history and science, there. history and science can be mixed into one, right? Like, history can be proven through science and also, like I said, who's writing the books? Like Jay said, who who we weren't exactly. there. Exactly. It depends so who on who you have telling the story. That's like, you know, in school, how they teach that, you know, um, the Black Panthers were like a, a terrorist group. The Black Panthers were not a terrorist group. They teach but that's, that? But that's or how like it's how being taught. Like, like, it's taught that, from a very negative yeah? perspective. I don't know if they teach that, but they, they it's in teach the, it that. It's in the media. Yeah. It's in the media. Yeah, in in the the media. I didn't know like hippie school. Were, I heard... Actually, they didn't talk about the Black Panthers in school. Nothing. No, they didn't. Or like they how the whole hippie it. movement was like a drug run, sex and the Black Panthers kind of thing. were also not a hippie movement mm-hmm. either. But no, they but, they but they started they seeing universities a lot. They they probably started seeing a lot of the hippies who were white so were people, hippies. right, mixing with the Black Panther movement and the struggle for civil rights. Yeah, they they're saying that yo, we those. this is getting out of hand. You know, I mean, people are well, rioting. They found a perfect way to deal with that. Again, it's nuanced. Wait, what? Yeah. How? Crack. Drugs. Oh, this was Lord. a great way to deal yeah. with that. Integration was uh, also now, a and that's, thing and, too. And you know what? That's when I started noticing the differences actually because I left um, school. I left school in, uh, after my freshman year of high school. I left public school and I did homeschool. And guess what? In my books, in my homeschool books, guess what it said? That crack was made by the government and put into certain areas to control oh, yeah. these issues that were happening. The CIA. Damn, what book were they you infiltrated but because you're the, not going to learn that in your public school book because that's not the propaganda that they want you to learn. Because and, the, that, and that goes back to thank who's, God for the internet, right? Who's 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 teaching it? And yeah, really. And you're not going to learn. Thank this in God for the internet. The black it's information like this that allows us to understand the various nuances in history, which and in, in our in our availability to it, which is what makes us creative and 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 it makes us intelligent far beyond what mm-hmm. our well, how we were as children and how our parents were as children and what they learned because mm-hmm. we have an alternative source for information so what happens when we no longer have that source Thank which leads us into the next glad you asked. You <laughs> stephanie good segue stephanie you're learning All right, so the next topic uh, i guess i'll say next topic where we well, really even on the topic guys happy happy <laughs> yeah i kind of want to go back to nibiru you know i want to hear about steph more about this this, this evolution theory that steph was talking about but See, so I want to hop right into net neutrality. Net this. neutrality. Should we talk about Colin Kaepernick real quick? Yeah, shout outs to Colin Kaepernick. Uh, I definitely 
pulled up the article. I guess we could let Jay introduce his right. uh, Jay's Jay's article here. I mean, Colin Kaepernick. You know, shout outs to him for uh, being the person of the year by GQ magazine. That's awesome. Um, let's see. He, uh, I'm proud of Colin right. Kaepernick, man. Yeah. Koba was right. Because <laughs> Malcolm X was right and Magneto was it right. Shows, and Cyclops was right. It shows that <laughs> I need a t shirt with all those on. But Sorry. you know what? It's one thing topic. it's one thing to celebrate someone else's success and it's another thing to be inspired by that success and take it on for yourself. What is it that you're standing up for that is going to make change? You know what I mean? Like what is it that you're doing to go for what it what you want, the change that you want? Because it's one thing to just be like, oh, man, I agree with him. And then it's another thing to actually support what it is, the, the change actions. that you want, to create mm-hmm. the demand for mm-hmm. the change that you want. Here's the thing. Like, with the change that he wants and the change I believe that you're speaking about, I don't think can ever take place. Because you, you have to break the button? system that we in, are in down to the roots to get rid of the problem. That's the system, you know, like... It's the way things operate, right? We were talking about housing and stuff earlier. You're supposed to get a house. You're not supposed to live in a tent on a tree, right? Like, you're supposed to think, I got to buy a house. You know, white picket fence. Provide for my family. Exactly, right? These are the things that you, it's the system, it's society, you know? And, uh, I mean, are we talking about what they're selling us as it's supposed to be right or what we are actually having to to deal with in in the world, right? Because I think what Kaepernick is saying was that his his whole protest. Is about police brutality. Well, and the idea that we have, we have enacted change. Like the the, the American people, like the, the 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 police systems have, they have a lot of people now who have to use body cams. Maybe like change. that is a change that came about. And even if it's not widespread throughout every community, it's a very common thing. And we have seen videos. We have seen more footage than we've ever seen before, both from. Various camera sources and the police cameras and the dashboard cameras. Social media is now too. People, everyone Social media got a camera. But like there is. New. It's nothing new. It's stuff that we always knew, but it's just like proof in the pudding. Like, well, oh, that proof we finally is have valid. Proof that, that proof is that, valid. You know, but we've been saying this for years and years and years. You know, and but that just goes back to we're living in a place that was not meant for us. It's not meant for us. We are guests in it. Okay, we we help to we help to create. Um, the friction that keeps the engine going, you know, we help them. We but you still to have to participate going. in the system, you know. We're participating Agreed. in Black it, dollars, but it's white not dollar, for Asian us. Dollars, we have it's the system. not for us. So, Until it becomes for us, right? In order for it to become for us, we would literally have to take it over like they took it over. Because it's not for us. It's not meant to be for us. Which, the propaganda which, which is what I'm saying, that this, these changes will laws. never happen. We can't we take use, it over. We can't. Like I'm t- not just talking about black people, but the people in general. Like you can't take over the system. My, uh, I, mean, I mean, it's true marginalized too. Groups. Marginalized groups, right? You know, um, what's what's his name? Uh, Killer Mike. I was, I was. Uh, when I did Killer Mike become a political activist? First right? of all, you can't I, be a political Bernie activist Sanders. with a name I, like Killer, Killer Mike, Mike, though. Yeah, you got to change your name. Said, I, can I call you Jeffrey? What's your real name? Yeah. <laughs> he said something. The Michael Jeffrey. He said something that hit home for me. You know what I mean? He was like, you know, black people in general are not are not in a position where they can do what they want to do. And they're not in a position because they can't even take care of themselves. They're still very much reliant on the system. And I'm not quoting exactly. I'm saying mm-hmm. this Perfect. is just what I got from it. He's like, how many of you can uh, can grow your own food? How many of you... That's everybody. That's not just black people. How many, That's how many the majority of, of the population. Can, well, I can tell you that... That's what I'm saying. Government that controls that food. I'm part control of a group. The previous control the I can tell you that I'm part of a group supply, that grows the food and that... I'm one of the only black people in there, okay? So, it's, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, Steph, that's because every- most people would probably rather play Shadow of War. No, I think, that, <laughs> I think that ever, after you force someone <laughs> to, to, to yeah. create, to, to grow your food, I don't think they want to grow it anymore. That's the thing is, like, with growing food, though, like, I absolutely agree. I think we, we all should. I think it'd be nice. That way we can regulate and see what exactly we're doing mm-hmm. instead of having someone else regulate that system for us. But the thing is, the if thing. it takes years... To grow something like you know, say like you know, livestock for example. Mm-hmm. Like I, I got to tonight. You know, yeah, I can't, yeah. can't wait. You know, like so you, you, know, you almost see so the it, need, takes, it takes generations. You to need pass down. you need land. Like most people, you like don't I don't have land. a place. You don't need land. I can land. grow, well, I can grow your whole your whole your whole season's worth of food on your balcony. You don't need land. You just need know how. You just need to understand how things work. How plants work and how you can grow food. Juice eats but a lot, though. You so don't I, know. I do eat a lot. You don't know. You don't have the information. You can't. You can't do it. 
You don't have the tools. You haven't been given the tools, so you know? You, you, they still teach in school that you need to, you know, in order to grow something, you have to put it in soil and cover it and water it, and you need sunlight. That's not how things work that at all. That's how I grew my carrots when that's, I was in middle school. Steph says science. <laughs> that's not how it works at all. Like, that's... that's in three days, we can have a snack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, if we're gonna get it to the point where we can put it in the microwave, just put it on a minute, it's gonna grow into my. But food. that's. But I would that's love a, that. Yeah, that's gonna be hot, right? But that's the thing. That's an unrealistic understanding of how things work, and then you don't have the appreciation for how it works. You have little. It was, it was a joke. They, they have they, robots in new back. Don't flips. insult agriculture. It's a matter of time. What? I'm not okay, but we started with Jay and Colin Kaepernick, though. Okay, so you know what? You, this is gonna be a well, long you know cast. What? What Stick at the say? topic with <laughs> somebody <laughs> sitting here. Okay. Is that intelligent idea? Talking yeah, about I had a, we had an no amazing answers. segue, and it's gone. Yeah, you know, you know what? I would say, and we'll take it back to your segue because I would say that every single day of my life, I am protesting just like he's protesting. I am protesting against the things that I do not want to create a demand for, and even if it's just me, I have taken so much money out of the pockets of the people who don't need it. I have taken all this money. I drop, I will tell you that mm. I am not at the point where I want to be as far as growing my own food, mm. but I will tell you that I drop like almost $300 every single week to feed a family of five, and I will tell you that it's not being spent on meat. So you are missing a lot of money. You're not- There's no chicken not, anywhere I'm not now. buying any of your meat. I'm not buying any of your eggs. I'm not buying any of your dairy products. I'm not buying so any really, of your So really, food. you spend $400 because Corey goes shit. out and buys $100 worth of meat. You just don't buy it, so you don't associate well, that with your household. That. Okay. Let's not talk about Corey that. Corey has to have his own freezer. Well, that's Get this thing. out of my freezer. I am Corey. protesting, is, but he is not. Put the steak in and my freezer. And how does freezer. that help? How does it help if you don't stand up for what it is that you're believing in? So you, I understand that your point is absolutely valid, man. We have to, we have to invest in the things we want to support, and we have to remove our money from the things we find. If we don't, if we're going to talk about criminalism, how disgusting it is, then we have to. What we were talking about before, boycott. We have to boycott. Boycotting exactly. does but matter so hard, on a though, capitalistic. Especially when only like eight companies control like everything. It is so, hard. Like, it is hard. Still, but if you have enough ma- people doing it, it will make an it impact. It still matters. Oh, yeah, so, it and they will change if, their if model. If enough people do it, because the one thing corporations do, we can't predict that they will do, is do whatever they need to do to maximize profit. Mm-hmm. And if we remove our money from one area, they will adjust and shift. To remake exactly. that profit. So look, we have to, and that's how, how many, we control them. Look at mm-hmm. how many are investing in organics, enough, how many people. are investing in in uh, solar and all the, in all these things that it's like we create the demand. Energies. We create the demand no matter what it is, no matter what it is, we are in control because we are the dollars, okay? Yeah. And they have no dollars without our dollars. That is the whole purpose. We are the hamsters and the wheels. But if we d- refuse to eat this food, guess what? They're gonna buy another food. Mm. All right? They're gonna, they're gonna, they have to cater to what it is that you want. Oh, yeah. You create that demand. If enough people do it, yeah. And that just goes back to, to I, I commend him. Mm-hmm. I commend him on his protest make a because dollar you know impact. what? His protest is inspiring other people to protest, and it doesn't matter if it's for the same issues or not. You mm-hmm. still need to stand up for what it is that you're. Absolutely, believing. and you know what's important about protesting is gathering people. Again, we said. What's important about protesting is being able to gather people together. And one of the best ways to gather people together is through the internet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like gathering people, uh, uh, crowdfunding. You can create an entire new industry through crowdfunding. Um, uh, uh, just groups protesting. Mm-hmm. Like people gather online in order to gather to protest things. And one of the things we know now that is happening is the protests that are going on with, uh, that will be going on with dismantling of net neutrality. Okay, oh, hey, hold on, hang on, hang on. So we Damn. had Jay doing an article. I know, Damn that was it. a good that was a good lead in. I wanted to cut you off before that. Why we just, but we never let Jay finish his thing on Colin Kaepernick. Stephanie referenced him two or three times and gave him props. What did Colin Kaepernick do on Thanksgiving? He had a very un thing. Excuse me. And it might lead into the net neutrality thing. He posted uh, today, I was on Alcatraz Island at the Indigenous People's Sunrise Gathering in solidarity for those celebrating their culture and paying respect to those that participated in the 19-month occupation of Alcatraz in the effort to force the honor, force the United States to honor the Treaty of Fort Lemine, Lemie. Mm-hmm. But basically, like, you know, I was talking about this precast, how, you know, I think it's almost silly that the United States, or even just, well, we mostly the United States, where we society, you know, we designate almost a day to give thanks. 
and you know the you know the night of or like the next day you know black friday we go out and we just ride essentially we just like trample people just to get something that we don't really need mm-hmm. it's it's I would hypocritical I it's, it's very I hypocritical. Can black friday crowds if you die and being smothered or trampled to death in a black friday crowd you, that's the worst way to go <laughs> I, will, I, will, I, will, I, I will compare that to like the running of the bulls in spain or something you well, yeah, volunteer yeah, 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 exactly. all right exactly. nobody made you get in line at walmart so you got in line you got trampled I'm not saying that it's a good thing that it happened, but you took the risk. I like that. This is going to sound very harsh. I like that shit. It's going to sound harsh. Drop it. Put your foot down. But there's there's not enough natural selection when it comes to humans. So you know what? Sending the herd. That's a good way of getting rid of the ones that are not... I'm just saying. It's, you know... And and the thing is, like... (laughs) The people who die... (laughs) Damn, oh, sorry, the people that died on Black Friday. That was that was that was definitely just did it to hurt. Yeah, they, they, that's messed up, Steph. That's racist. No, no, it's not racist. It's not nothing to do with. It's not racist. What I was gonna say is like, no, if, you, if you think about like the, if you think about Native Americans though, like they obviously don't celebrate Thanksgiving, right? Mm-hmm. It's a day of mourning for them. Yes. And if you actually look at you know like Native Americans, a lot of them are in poverty. About eighty to ninety percent of them can't even afford a feast. So this is almost like, you know, spitting in their face kind of yeah. thing. So it's just like, yo, it's kind of messed up. And I, I but we live up. within a society that spits on them every single day. True. Society spits on everybody. Bank on their finances <laughs> spit on everybody. Okay. <laughs> what? What's this whole Redskins thing going Red back in a couple casts? Whatever, okay. But anyway, um, well, I would applaud Colin Kaepernick, Kaepernick, Kaepernick the black faces. And, and plus, they don't change. They don't change. Red. See, we, now they're gonna force me back into this topic, Steph. Okay, let me finish over Kaepernick. Kaepernick, I'm proud of him because he's bringing attention to this issue that people probably wouldn't have known happened nationwide, right? These I, you know what? I Indians think we protesting. Do, we just ignore it. Yeah, yeah, but it made news at least through the Intelligent Idea Talkers podcast, where we have no answers. Um, well, we it made news to us through Colin Kaepernick and him being there, publicizing it. Like Colin, man, I'm proud of him for riding the wave of his career after football. It should be like an inspiration to everybody who, speaking as a fan who watches football, who's mm-hmm. missing the games right now, um, <laughs> and in favor of the Intelligent Idea Talkers podcast, which I would rather do anyway. Right, the NFL will be there regardless whether we do this cast or not. So that is right not even now. important. But I applaud him for riding after his career. It shows that. There's a chance for you to do something besides football. Football is not the end all be all. You know, football brought him to the stage. It was a platform, and now he's turned it into something that he can ride for the rest of his life, and hopefully turn into a career um, as an activist or a yeah. public speaker or something like that. Football, um, so but getting back to the Redskins, damn it, I didn't forget. All right, Jay made that little knuckleball <laughs> Redskins joke. Okay, they're not going to change the Redskins. Okay, because it's it's economics, man. It's politics. Okay, you change the Redskins name, the trickle down effect. Then you're good. So there's 50 other teams who are named after an Indian sure. monarch or or a Celtics. mascot. Celtics. You're going to have to change all of that. Do you know how much money is involved in that? A Celtic is not a derogatory term, as far as I know. Well, the mascot is an Irish guy with his with his fist up. You know what I mean? So that was a leprechaun. It's a, look, leprechaun that, that goes to Irish, Notre Dame. Notre Dame Irish, has a leprechaun. Yeah, the Dukes. That's like having a dragon. What about a the Seminoles? Is on what about the Seminoles? What, what about the Seminoles in college? That's a that's a uh, college football team. Seminole was actually the name of the tribe. I, I heard I the Seminoles weren't that. real. I was going to say. I heard the Seminoles weren't actually a tribe. That's what I heard. I don't know if it's true or not. You're about to offend the one fan it. out wow. there that you know, <laughs> but, to us. But there's only like if there's 12 tri- Seminoles there's left, be a dude. You just effect. completely shit it on all be, 12 of them. There's going to be a trickle down effect. effect. <laughs> right? Like, no other no other culture or group of people is mascotted like the Indians are, right? So, I don't think I mean, hold on, hold the term First of all, let's stop calling them Indians. I don't think... We had a excuse me, Native American, okay? No, they're not Native Americans. Uh, they don't excuse like to be called me, that. indigenous. They like right? to be called indigenous first, because they were the first ones here. First nation. Well, they were the first th- ones th- here. Th- that goes back to... And okay, it, whatever. You know what? If someone if but someone I'm saying, tells me that they don't want to be called whatever, I'm gonna respect the fact. I'm that saying that's as far as but nobody's ever told you that they don't want to be called redskin. Dude, no Indians ever told you that. To me personally, dude, seriously, was an Indian told you they want, and did you call them redskin? Is redskin no, going around like the word? But nigga? you know what? I don't go up to uh, random to white nigga. people and say I don't like you calling me nigga. But you do He's that. like I didn't call you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's not how it works. Okay, <laughs> so the, the, I'm saying for you personally, <laughs> nobody's ever you that. nobody's <laughs> ever told you that they don't like being called a redskin. They might. <laughs> say they might say that they don't like the term redskin but they haven't been called it because that's not a term you use that, in rhetoric that 
like, you use nigga all the time, right? The indigenous so, of this place do not want to be called Indian. D- okay, we don't. I don't Native personally of, know any. They Indians. don't want to be called Native Americans. I've because never they are know, not I've never met anybody America. who's been to, who's told me that. These are the Americas. No, we called it the Americas. They were already here, and it wasn't the Americas. Like they were living here already. How are we gonna come here and be like, all right, guys? Isn't it? You guys are, are now. Well, that's called I colonization heard, and imperialization. Like, but we're not doing this. I'm going to first nations. Doesn't that refer to a certain group, though? I think that refers to a group versus... Like, I thought I heard first nation or something as well. I think that's a group. But they're not the first nation. Like, well, this is probably one of the... Uh, Africa. What? First nation of peoples? What are we talking about? Well, first I'm nation I'm of what? Here. I'm in here. In, Humanity? In Northern America. Northern America. We're talking about here... Well, okay. Which one? In America. You guys Which racist. ones came across the Bering Strait? <laughs> Which ones came across the Bering Strait? Look, let's just call them Native Americans and be done with it. Let's not mince words. So, yeah, shout out to Colin Kaepernick. Uh, and, uh, and Steph, if you keep taking this conversation to the origins of human existence, um, we're going to have a problem. Okay? Seminoles <laughs> are Native <laughs> American people originally from like Florida. Millions Today, of years they ago, principally live in Oklahoma with a minority in Florida and comprise three federally recognized tribes. Seminole Tribe of Oklahoma, Seminole Tribe of Florida, and Mus- I can't even say now, where that. is this from? Tribe of Indian Wikipedia, of course. Now, is Ooh, Seminole a conglomerate of other tribes or Seminole? I think like- they're their own tribe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where did you hear Seminoles didn't exist? I don't know. It was something I was watching. Internet. It was in Canada. I love the internet. They were Canada, right? <laughs> they were in Canada. They were in Canada. No, Florida. Florida. That's Florida. what it said here on Wikipedia. Oh. I mean, we know how See, iffy Wikipedia well can be. Either. So you know. Which leads us into the whole net neutrality thing. So, right? Does it, it, sure. it can. It wasn't so, as good a segue as Juice's <laughs> segue, but it you can. Know. In a nutshell, the FCC, current uh, uh, president of the FCC, Ajit Pai, is working to dismantle net neutrality. What is net neutrality? I hear you asking people. Well, net neutrality is the regulation of the internet was allowed us, allowed the uh, ISPs, the internet service providers, to uh, allow access to internet and and distribute it as if it were a utility, which means you you pay your monthly rate, right? And you get as much internet as you can use. Conversely, how the FCC or the FCC's new president, Ajit Pai, is trying to repeal that situation is that they're trying to make it so it's a pay by pay for usage situation, which allows so co- corporations to slow down or speed up or block any content application or website that you want to use. So, so it allows them to do that. Already being done in other countries. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Because, See how that's we don't like, want it. We don't want that. We don't here, want though. that here. And let's, talk, let's talk about how at least make our internet free. We, you're talking. You're talking to a very intelligent, a very intelligent consumer. Okay. And maybe you don't know how to, you know, program and get behind these things, but I'm sure you know somebody. That's just how things work. Like, I don't think that it's possible that they can regulate the internet from that, from like the way that you're saying that they want to regulate the internet. Oh, it's totally possible. I mean, there's already the black internet, the black, what is it? The black market? The black, black web. The black web. The dark web. The dark web. I gotta I be mean, black. No, the African American web. She racist. The African American web. Black Twitter. Why got people? African American Twitter. Because <laughs> Be- okay. <laughs> if you're a bigger corporation than another, internet of color, and you can pay the fees, you can have faster internet to your websites and where you want people to go than other. And I don't other think people. that that's. I don't think that's actually anything new. So I think that, question: Why I, I wouldn't it be we, possible? I don't think that we have the access that the, that we think we have in the beginning. Cool. We don't because they can slow down and speed up our actual. I mean, we access, are, but we if already they, deal with if they, this. If they, if they, if they, right. if they go through with this net neutrality and decide to end it, then you can possibly not have access. Period to those lesser uh, companies or um, they want to regulate it like they do cable companies. Mm-hmm. So think about how alternative media is already suffering. If you think about okay, with the recent changes in YouTube, yeah, right? That's true. The, like, yeah, and it, but you have, for to, the most you have part, to think. You have to think about how things really work. For example, there this, will be repercussions. The search engines, you know. I will be, here's just an example for me. I will be searching for a particular subject, searching, 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 and I can't find it, right? Mm-hmm. But then I'll put in something random, and oh shit, here comes what I was searching forever for, and I couldn't find anything, and that's because my my browser 
has already designated what it is that's going to pop up. Based Agreed. on what it is that I look at, based, based on your, on, on based on who's popular, and based on, on your, how his much search money, history. and based on how much money a company has put into algorithms, right? Into into mm-hmm. search engines to even show up Tracking in the first place. Track. That's a good right. way. To, that's not, a good way to break it down. This is so not that's, something that's new. This is something we're already dealing with. But net, Agreed. Agreed. So, killing net uh, neutrality uh, will enhance what's not already new. Right. right. So if saying. you if you dislike that. Imagine what they're going to do when they have full range to do that, not only by the ISPs. So you're talking about a search engine, right? You're talking about different search engines of what they pay these people to pro- promote at the top of their, their web searches. Not just we're at talking the top, about the I- even show up within the... Within we're talking the about the ISPs. Account. We're talking about Comcast. We're talking about these big Verizon, corporations, AT&T. Verizon, who, will, who want to introduce packages for certain segments on the internet, which means that... You will pay a certain amount for either access or limited or, access. Con- or limited access or I'm trying to think of the word like useful streaming of or, or of data to these websites. They will slow down the data if you don't a don't pay the packages. And this is just the potentiality of what this opens up, right? They'll slow down the streaming of the data to these websites from the perspective of the websites who will pay the ISPs. From your perspective, the consumer, you will have to. Uh, you will pay for certain packages, right? And this is, and I'm saying that this is not exactly what they said they're do, doing. This is, this is not at all what uh, uh, I just pie is saying. But these laws will open up the potentiality. And if we know anything about corporations, is that they are designed. I said, I said before, they are designed to maximize profit. This will allow them to set up a situation like this. Of course. Okay. So net neutrality, right? Definitions. Net neutrality, according to this article, net neutrality is the basic principle that has made the internet into what it is today. It prevents a big it prevents big internet service providers like Verizon from charging extra fees, engaging in censorship, or controlling what we see and do on the web by throttling websites, apps, and online services. Or basically curtailing it to people who can actually pay. Right? If you can't pay as much as a as another company, then access to your uh, to your online self or your website will be slowed down and uh, in favor of bigger companies who can actually pay the fees. Pay more. So, so small business, which is why it's neutrality. Then the internet is neutral, so everybody is supposed to be of the same, you know, um, search results. Like stuff was saying with the search engines, and right. everybody's mean, supposed to be at the same speed, same level with the internet. You know, it's supposed to be tailored to the experience of the user, right? Whereas with this. You would feel like it's going to be tailored to the to the to the people who can pay for it. They're going to tailor it around the company, the organization. You Wait. Know? So I was just thinking about this. So remember when you're saying that uh, certain results come up when you do a search, right? Like, is that based on how many people go to that? Like, I, I don't know the yeah. algorithm, mm-hmm. but is it is that what it's based on? Based yeah. on how many people web traffic? So yeah, yeah uh-huh. it's like so. Of course, they will put the most used at the top. That, mm-hmm. that to me makes sense. It doesn't to me imply any kind of corruption or any kind of like cheating to me but does that mean that they'll pay to show up not just as an ad but to show up within the search engine does that mean that they'll put the least used at the bottom or will it even show up that's what I mean that's what it would mean but at the same time when you look at how most things are organized on the internet it's so much stuff there's literally millions of pages for the same thing it's Mm -hmm. like you might want to organize it based on what people found most useful you know I and I'm just guessing, but that's and, what uh, that makes sense to me in a way. Um, going further along in the article, it says, uh, why is this pro? There's a protest happening at Verizon stores to uh, combat this whole. Um, what is it? On this, December 7th. This, right? No, the, December the, 14th is a vote. Yeah, we're right. December yep. 7th. December um, 7th, they will be protesting at multiple Verizon stores. So the question is, why? They said, why Verizon stores? Uh, it says, the new chairman of the FCC, Ajit Pai. Is former top lawyer for Verizon. I want to stop right there, and that made me think about this whole revolving door between government, absolutely, and corporations. Where you know these heads of these corporations, these banks, and these big companies will with, revolve into government, slide right? With, into government with different presidents and different leaders that are coming in, I and that's the, the way that people, that's the way that it works. That's the system. I think the first and it thing should that be need to changed, and that's why I don't trust. And government. Trump said he was. You live going to in America, that and America is a business. America is a business. Every you think that business. you're not a slave anymore. You're still a slave. America is a business. Numbers. Not for America. Every we, country. We, we, Name we, a country that doesn't work similar we, to this or not. Whenever you have a central bank. This economy runs because we do the work. 
Yeah, so whether we feel like we're free or not, we're not actually free. Like it's a squirrel it's still, is more free than you are. Basically, yeah, probably because they don't rabbit have, is more free because than you. they don't have the cognition to be useful. Their bodies are too small to eat. What do you mean? They're very useful. I mean, I guess not like, to be useful in a are, business but... sense. Like we're not sticking. If if we could, we would stick mail on squirrels and send them to other places to, to deliver oh, a mail. Like a, uh, or like, a, or, like or, Steph would send ravens all the time. Steph like send, get me a raven. You know? <laughs> send a raven. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, like, if we could use squirrels, you, Steph you don't think we ravens. would? They're not useful <laughs> to our industry. But cows are useful. Mm-hmm. Sheep are useful. Dogs are useful. All these other animals we oh, do. It's okay. We so just clone them. Squirrels, squirrels, they plant thousands of trees every mm-hmm. year. That's because they can't find the nuts. Oh, they're, they're useful ecologically. It's by accident. First of all, <laughs> they're not doing it on purpose. Squirrels are very intelligent. They're very intelligent. They can get in. They can get into. Um, prob- they can problem solve the way that freaking some kids can't problem solve. Okay. Squirrels are very intelligent. Dumb, that's, 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 dumb kids, well, that's kids. I mean, I'm just saying, like, squirrels are intelligent, <laughs> yeah, and I respect their right to exist. My daughter but can out problem solve On the squirrel. human, Shit. like, on the the important scale, squirrels are way down there. You know, they're, they're important down. ecologically. Look, octopus. They, they play their squirrel. role. Mm. Like, I'm just saying, like, we're talking about intelligence yeah. levels. Cow. Like, if you squirrel. never saw another squirrel in your life, you probably wouldn't. How can dolphins. you fight for equality when you don't treat other things equal? equal? You know what I mean? Well, we're Treat talking them? about squirrels. Treat them. You're you're sitting there and you're thinking about how you are you are bigger and they are smaller. They are below. It's you. not only no, just it's a not size they're thing. small. It's they're, a... they're small and no, they're not useful because we can't eat them. Were, you can eat them if you wanted to eat them. We can't eat them if they're them? starving. If a squirrel, if a squirrel it? came and hopped in your car when you was getting in there, when you was getting in the car, the squirrel just came and jumped in. You'd be like, "Yo, get the fucking squirrel out of here!" Yes, you would. You there? There's no way you pet that squirrel, oh, okay? Steph will probably be all in tune with nature. She like, she like scratch the squirrel under his chin, you know. Steph be like, the squirrel will climb on his shoulder. She be like, oh, my you know, friend. I'm a squirrel. You guys are laughing, but okay, they are gonna so, kill us one day. Here's, here's one of, <laughs> be a total here's squirrel taking. They go on the window like. <laughs> told you, no, I forgot. This didn't is you? this is the problem, and I would say this is the problem with humanity. Okay, but this is the problem. Is You're knocking on your window. You thought I forgot. Nah, I forget. The, the problem is that first of all, you want you want equality as a people, right? But then you don't accept that you are a people. You 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 know you everyone is separated into this race that doesn't actually exist. And then, and then you're sitting here, and you and you and you place yourself above other living things as if that you're bigger or better than them or more powerful than them. And it's not necessarily the case. This living thing lives different than than you as a living thing. You live in a different world. You live in a you you live in the same world, but you live in your own world. You live in you live in this. Um, you know, right. this bubble of denial where you think that you are yeah, separate these four walls from... and this roof that keep us outside I'm not, of nature. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm that you, squirrels are not important. But nature would treat us just as badly as it treats everything else if it had the opportunity. We okay. stepped not out of that. being treated badly already? Nature for, you for a time now? You are a slave. We are all slaves. By society, but we're talking about nature. I'm You're a slave to nature as well, you know. <laughs> nature comes through and blows your house down. You're going to look for somebody to build it back up, which is going to be, that's where the society comes I understand what in. you're saying, stuff, but... Humans, yes, civilization is not permanent. If we're talking about no, of course not. It's gonna ch- it's gonna evolve. It's not gonna be this, but it's gonna be something else, and it's gonna be consistent. There will be something else. It's not like there's unless a, a hugely cataclysmic event happens, which will also wipe out a vast majority of the animal and plant life on here. Humanity or our civilizations, it will be some kind of civilization, and it won't be this, but it will be something else. Mm-hmm. Like the idea that it won't be. That it's just not going to exist anymore. One it's gonna day, have to... where we are sitting at right now will be taken over again. It might Steph, be leveled. Stop it. The, don't there might be an office building here one day. Shit, we don't know. We got to have a survival cast with Steph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look. So back to this. Man, We're talking about the net neutrality. How uh, Agit Pie is a. Form, I don't know. We just spent like the last ten minutes talking about squirrels, but. <laughs> okay, so Agit Pie is a former <laughs> top squirrels. lawyer for the Verizon for so Verizon the Company. Um, and it says the company has been spending millions on lobbying and lawsuits to kill net neutrality so that they can gouge us all for more money. By protesting at Verizon stores, uh, the people who are running the protests uh, were shining a light on the corruption and demanding that our local locale do something about it. Only Congress has the power to stop Verizon's puppet FCC. So at all, so at the protest, we'll be calling and tweeting at legislators. legislators and in cities where it's possible to will march from Verizon stores to lawmakers' offices. Um, 
yeah, so that's what the whole protesting thing is going on. And definitely, it says Verizon company has been spending millions on lobbying. Lobbying is where it is, mm-hmm. and that's how you drive yep. government policy. And when you have a company that can spend millions on an issue, it's like, how can the common people compete, right? Like, if we wanted to do something to protect inner city squirrels, right? How can you compete when they, this company could throw millions of dollars at lobbying to change a law for this specific the only thing? thing? That you could do is, is perhaps use media to your to your advantage. And that's that's like you was saying, the internet, social media. You know, it's, it's one of our most useful tools. It is and, and probably exact the thing most useful which, tool, especially in the political arena, because like look we, at the irony. We have the numbers, but we don't have the political organization <laughs> to incite real change. The numbers is what comes into it, and our dollar power, our buying power, is how that affects, especially corporate on a corporate level. But I mean, this Verizon is spending millions of dollars lobbying, right? So they've been knowing they wanted to go this route for a long time now, and they spent millions of dollars doing so. So you know, we can't let it happen. Hopefully, it doesn't. Um, Look at the irony of us having to use the internet to get out the word. That they're trying to screw up the internet, like that's that says everything, man. If this thing passes, like they can silence us in the future. Though. They can silence everybody, man. Like any small activist group you have going on, mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter what side you're on, left or right. Mm-hmm. Like they will shut you up if you aren't with the program. Yeah. If you are doing something which they just don't like or don't condone, or if you don't have enough people viewing your your stuff. It's not going to ever have the opportunity to grow mm-hmm. because they will shut it. They, they won't shut it down. Maybe they will. Shit. But you know what? It's just a matter of time before you have a clause where you have to have this much traffic in order to stay active. Or you will be paying more to mm-hmm. cover your inactivity. And if you can't pay that, we're going to just cancel you out anyway. And yeah. nobody's going to see any of you, anything in you in any search result. This is bad for entrepreneurs, bad for small businesses. It's a setup, man. And it's bad for alternative media, which is where I would say a lot of us at this table would get most of our news coverage, right? Absolutely. Like I always man. said I'd rather go to TYT than go to ABC mm-hmm. News, you know. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, man. It's scary, man. And uh, I was I was reading something once, listening to something, man. Something on economics. It might have been Richard Wolf. He was saying like the basic Richard one of the Wolf. basic principles of capitalism is to you you end up buying everything up, right? So it's consolidation of power, monopolies, right? monopolies, right? Like you just you. So the, all these companies, he was saying in recent years, yeah, it was Richard Wolf saying in recent years we've seen we've been seeing companies buying up each other. So right, <clears throat> so you don't have just this other company anymore. You know, uh, there's no competition. Exactly, exactly. The competition. So it's the the They're capitalism makes you swallow everything up, and that's what this thing is. Net neutrality is going to lead to a streamline of power, consolidation of power. And it's just it's capitalism at work, and these you know, companies I are swallowing everything up. They want con- total control over everything, so that they benefit in the end and they profit in the end. You know, you know, I remember in middle school, or maybe it was high school, but it was at some some point in school, in, in you know the younger school area times where they were they used to talk about how monopolies were one of the big no nos for our government mm-hmm. for our for our capitalistic system. Who was right? it? Uh, was it Rockefeller? Or somebody bought up all the train companies. Yeah, and that a while was ago. Yeah, and that they was thought an that example, was bad. Yeah. Right, but that's happening so much now with Amazon and with Whole Foods. Yeah, everybody's buying up everything. Walmart, they're just buying up all of these things, and they're, they're killing all competition. Like Jay said, what is it? Six companies control everything. Yeah, Nestle yeah. and I mean, Disney. You Disney? know how many companies oh, yeah. Disney Unilever? owns? Huh? Unilever. One. Dude, Disney owns everything. Now, like, I mean, it's it's crazy. Uh, you know, everything is already so controlled by the hands of a few anyway. And now you want the internet to be the same way, you know? And the internet is supposed to be a platform for freedom of speech where, you know, it's the internet. It's where we all share ideas and thoughts and views and where everybody has an equal chance, you mm-hmm. know, where we can put out the Intelligent Idea Talkers podcast where we have no answers, just more questions. More questions. You know, and, right? you know... It, it, like if this <laughs> this whole net neutrality thing goes through, our our results might not even pop up in the search, which this is cast not might fair. not even go go on. It's, which is not fair, right? It's the internet. 
You know, but they're they considering that, and they're willing to do it. Are gonna are gonna go down. They're considering and they're willing to do it to benefit one mega giant company who can afford it. If you can afford it, you can skirt the laws. You can skirt the politics. So how do you change it? Activism. No, you change it with your dollars. You do not spend your money on it. You create the demand with your money. But you have to go on the internet. You don't have to. Do no, you, no, no, you, you no. You know what you're asking? Let's start with, let's, let's focus on what we're dealing with right now. Right now, activism is the act, answer. If this short gets passed, term. right, Definitely. short term, we're going to, we have to fight this. We have to make our presence known. We have to be heard, right? If they go ahead and pass this, then I say boycotting would be the answer, right? That How would be the next move. the internet? Are you talking about it boycott sucks. Verizon specifically? Just use it on your phone, right? You don't buy you don't buy access for your house. Mm-hmm. You'll just keep your phone bill, right? That'll you don't think that'll hurt them? Happens if to everybody talk. cuts that shit out through their phone, oh hell yeah! Like that'll cut their 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 business by but half. Then, but you don't have unlimited data on your phone though. Like so, even if you use the internet, like T-Mobile has internet. Uh, yeah, I got. I got. Unlimited. We might have to go to T-Mobile. On T-Mobile. Everybody might have to go to T-Mobile, and nobody's gonna like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm on T-Mobile. Saying. Look, look, for the purpose of argument, I'm just saying, like, nobody, then then that would be another monopoly situation. The all in all, we have to, we will have to move towards boycotting. And if that means we don't have internet, right, for our houses, or we got to use our just cell phones or whatever, no, like, will you, will you be the one to make that change? You will force, you uh, fight? You force big business to pay for it. So, for example, you know what, what if I cut off my internet and I use it at Starbucks? Yeah, exactly. Right? You just use it at other venues. You download your porn there, and you then you can watch it at home. Right? Yo, porn traffic is download- major. Starbucks will Star- pay for it. Starbucks will pay for your porn. <laughs> the fact that like porn sites are now like fighting like net neutrality, that's of crazy. Course. That's crazy, dude. Okay, well, just for uh, shits and giggles, I pulled up a list of... Um, porn sites? The, I will pull. I'll pull that up next. Uh, of all the major <laughs> companies who own everything, okay. So just as far as consumer goods. Oh, uh, before before we start, you guys want to guess uh, some of these? I think it'd be fun. I do know Nestle, right? Nestle definitely is up Nestle. there. Um, Coke. Time Warner. Coca Cola. Time Warner. Right. Okay, let's just run through Pepsi. everything. Um, Pepsi and Coke. Like the one that I saw here says Pepsi owns a lot of stuff. Like Mountain Dew and all that. Yeah. And this is as far as a consumer, consumer goods, so things Souls. you go to the grocery store and buy, you know. Um, and they own all the major brands as far as consumer products. Uh, Mondelez, Kraft, Coca-Cola, yeah. Nestle, PepsiCo, Johnson Johnson. P&G, Johnson & Johnson, Mars, Danone, Mars. General Mills, Kellogg's, General Mills, and yeah. Unilever. Oh, stuff I don't I use. Knew, I knew you know Unilever. No, they yeah, own no, no, but the every thing is, you brand might not that you go to the store and buy. You might not use them directly, though, but there are some. One of these brands on this list you use. Where? I don't know. Look, I don't know one, one, of, <laughs> I'm just saying. one of these brands on this list you use, though. You use them on that, that shirt? This came from Canada. She made it herself. What up? Mm-hmm. She I know, right? I probably remove this one. No, no, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of organic stuff out there that I used to buy. I'm like, yo, man, I love Amy's or I love, like, you know, like, whatever, mm-hmm. right? But then you keep, you keep going up and you're like, oh, shit. They right, so look, that, that was as far as consumer goods, right? This is a uh, studio and media companies. Uh, GE, uh, mm-hmm. News Corp. Uh, Disney, Viacom, Time Warner, Viacom. CBS oh, own Viacom. every channel you watch. Time Warner. Every, just almost every media yeah. consumption thing that you use is owned by one of those six companies. Um, it's crazy, man. TV channels, CBS, Disney, Viacom, NBC own just about every channel. You got small stations like ESPN, um, AMC, stuff like that, substations. Same thing with airlines, same thing with cars. It's crazy, man. Yeah, it's only a couple. Man. So you wonder why a company like Verizon can throw millions of dollars at the government to lobby to get a law passed that they want that's going to benefit their company and their business model. We have to we have to fight to push laws that we, we do. keep and, this. And I know I said a couple weeks ago, like, protesting. What were we talking about? What me and you argued about? Protesting and voting. voting. I don't want to say voting doesn't matter. It does because it does give us a a platform for our voice to be heard um just like protesting but it's just once whoever we vote for are into the system i feel like the system will swallow them up so yeah. you're you'll join the system you're not joining it to change it you're joining it to be a part of it 
But it's the laws that are the big issue, man. Mm-hmm. The fact that legalized bribery, uh, bribery, that bribery Lobby. is legalized through lobbying and and do campaign donations. Like those mass campaign donations from these corporations are is buying a politician. Mm-hmm. And it's obvious and it's clear. Let's talk about okay, so here's the thing. If you if you think about how America is run and and you look at it like it's a, a lever, all right? And and you a manual lever that someone is turning and turning and turning. The only change that you're going to be able to input is all about whether or not this lever is turning. So Whatever they have to do to keep this lever turning, they will do. Mm-hmm. If the lever is not turning, then you they don't care about what it is that you have to say. Mm-hmm. It's all about keeping this going, keeping this going, keeping this going. And if you don't if you are not contributing to keeping it going, then they don't have anything to say to you at all. It doesn't matter what you have to say, it doesn't matter what you want. America is a machine. It's it a is business. a machine. And I remember Yes. And but it's a business. It is a business. It is a business, but like a business ran on forced labor. <clears throat> but it's not forced. It is forced. I mean it's all right. It's okay. forced as far as from society. a perspective, right? It's forced from a perspective. But from a very specific perspective. But nobody's forcing you to get up and go to work in the morning. No. No, but society is. What about the prison system though? I mean, Same thing. It's forced labor. <coughs> most society prisons, forces most you to get up. Prisons are privately though. owned, mm-hmm. and they're making money off of these. Off of these. What is it called? Corrections prisoners. Corporation of America. But if you look at it from another perspective, Central. America mm-hmm. is also a government which protects us, which allows us to have businesses in order to feed ourselves it's and feed our families. Protects you from what? Uh, Canada. Right. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to vilify. Like if any, if you ever go to Canada, from Brazil, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't like, matter. That's it cold it as hell doesn't there. matter. How many other people will want this land? Right. So I'm saying I'm talking about from another perspective, and it's weird because I'm, I'm using. Really it's, it. weird, it I'm, it's weird. I'm. It's weird. I'm here on the the conservative perspective, right? But we have things that other people want, or other countries will want. You don't think that that Spain. You don't think Spain was here for no reason before? I before the Americans started colonizing East Coast? They were all in search for gold. Yes. And that was here. And it was in the Americas. And, and Canada lands? is part of the Americas. Dude, I mean, it might be Canada. But we it's... we have a lot of crops. We we export a lot of food. I don't think like America... this thing, this <laughs> land, land for the oh, fact gosh. of the matter is land we is export, a thing. I don't think I don't think, don't think America has a shortage of any food. kind of resource. I think we're perfectly capable of... of providing or have every resource in abundance i think the economics of the situation curtail demand which leads to a want and when you can control the demand and the supply we work on a global system so you can raise and lower the price have you guys ever ever read the hunger games or watched or watched the Mm -hmm. movie you don't get as much from the movie but if if you ever read the book it's really interesting because it's based upon in the future, and it's based upon America in the future. But they call it a new, you know. I've read dystopian books before, mm-hmm. well, so I, I have a pretty good idea of various times I, of dystopias. I think, it's, I think it's interesting because it's like how how everyone is broken down into these groups, and how mm-hmm. everyone is still doing exactly what they're doing now. Only they are now forced to do it in a, in the sense of you don't have. Any choices anymore? Guess what? We got second amendment rights if we even come down to like it. fine. You but, don't want to. You don't want to do this anymore. Fine. Then now you will be forced to do it. At what point does it turn into that? Our government. All right. I'll, and again, I'll say it from a very specific point of view. Of course, the government is a big enslaver, right? But also from another point of view, the government and our country has offered vast opportunities to millions of people, mm-hmm. right? So you can't just say it's just all oh, just but only one what? perspective, which is but true. For what? What no matters to you? No one does anything for anybody just because, like, just to do it. That's not true. I don't think America... That's, not, that's literally not true. Okay. You don't want to vilify the American government in general because people, on for the most part, are, are uh, empathetic and sympathetic towards other human beings. But I think the people who are running the America, the true people who are in power... And I'm not talking about the president or these people we see on TV. I'm talking about the people who are there when those presidents are gone. I mean, I'm talking about the heads of these corporations. I think they're using America as a tool to push a certain agenda profit. and maximize profit. They're That's using it, it as a, as a medium to raise and lower demand on the rest of the world. It's That's the why same. they want this interconnected uh, it's the same thing economies. Worldwide. 
worldwide, there's only a handful of people that actually run things, and the rest of us just run, we support the economy for them. I wouldn't even argue people. I mean, maybe, but it's corporations. Like, we, we, we always talk about how we're afraid that Andrew is going to take over, the robots are going to take over. The well, robots are, are taken the over. The they're robots coming. are the corporations that have their own legal entities, mm-hmm. right? And whose only function is to maximize profit. And will do so by any means because it's their only function, right? I say that to say that there are people and people do have, there are benevolent people, there are bad people. There are people who are greedy and there are people who are giving, right? And to, 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 to ignore the fact that there are good people just because we see so much of the evil, or I'm not even saying people, but just to ignore the good things of any system, just because you, you see the evil and the evil sucks, like you have to look at it as a whole. And Mm -hmm. what we want is balance, right? Like, no government is going to be 100% good. There is no government right now in existence, and there has never been a government in in the past that that has been 100% good for everybody. It's just not a thing. It's never been a thing. Even when we were in primate tribes and you had a a male-dominant society, it never existed. We're we're way over the 50% threshold. I mean, I'd say we're probably 85, 15. I don't know. Evil. I don't know. I mean, because of I the think corporate influence. Yeah, our our like, corporate influences have thrown look our at this country off filter. Thing. Look, at, look at the agenda that Verizon has that they're trying to push Where else are you going to go? Legislation. The question is, where else? What other options do we have? We, I think we've pretty established going off the grid, not really an option. Unless you live in the mountains. Unless you like they, they, don't give, they don't give a fuck about having a resource. Unless you don't, don't care about air, air conditioning. Oh, unless you don't care about everything, right? As, if you want to live a comfortable as, life, as long as you are not a threat, Steph, you wouldn't. You, as I'm long not, as you are not a threat, you can you can go off and, and do what you want to do. Wait, Steph, many you had that air conditioner on. But if you are, didn't. if you become a threat, then that's when there is an issue. You have to not be a threat. If you want to live independently and you want to do things that you want to do, you want to live your threat life. Threat has it's many not impossible definitions. to go off the grid. You, you have you have to be you have to be able to not be a threat. And you still have to pay your taxes. You Do you ever see those people on YouTube or wherever that travel the globe but don't have a job, right? But they just travel. They hitchhike. They um, get different jobs in mm-hmm. certain places that they're in. And then they just move on, you know? Like a nomadic lifestyle, you know? You can do that. It's totally possible to go off the grid, but is that comfortable? And, is then, it and then it's to for what your end? Family, you to know? what end? Well, that depends on what it is that you want. Like, if you didn't know where you were going to be tomorrow night, what do you? Uh, it could be okay, exciting, but it could also be a I'm detriment talking, because what if you had general. kids? Like, what would be a what would be a a useful outcome? Like, again, we none of us getting out of this life alive, right? So, again, what what kind of outcome would it be which it would be beneficial to go off grid? Like, I understand if we would live in a society in which. They were knocking on your door and dragging you out because I guess you, you should ask the Amish. I don't know. Like <laughs> I'm saying, like I'm sure their reason is God, right? I'm sure they have their reason. Is that their uh, everlasting is, life in heaven, excuse. right? Is that why? Is that why the Amish people live like that? Is it a religious thing? Like that? Yeah, I, yeah well, they're it religious. Is a religious thing. Yeah. So this is why they don't use like modern some technology. Self deprivation thing. They don't really still go around in like horse and buggies and stuff. They do, yeah, they damn do. right. You ever go to Philly? The they time. do. My sister does live in Hagerstown, Maryland, which is like <coughs> close to Pennsylvania, and uh, we definitely saw some. I don't know if they were in a horse and carriage though. You know, we went to Hershey Park out there too, and you see some on the way to Hershey yeah. Park. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I don't know what they were in horse and carriage though. They, yeah. I passed by some in the summer, yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. Yeah, so if a horse and buggy pulled up next to your car, would you think that was weird? <laughs> would you race it? <laughs> <laughs> would you race it? <laughs> you got one horse, the I got 200. <laughs> <laughs> what, son? Let's do this. Oh, man. I got like 30, but you know, whatever. Let's do this. Pull up next to him. Let's do this. Put on your hazard lights. Mm-hmm. And was it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, man. It's all dumb. What? But it's a... It's it's always again everything is nuanced, man. Nothing. Our government is not completely evil, even with Trump in office. No, it's not completely it's, evil. We have a governmental system where we have states and well, state you think legislatures that it's, you think which that make it's laws independently. Though. If you want to, if you want to take it there, evil. then there's always there's always a balance between negative and positive. No matter what it is that you're doing in life, no matter where it is that you are, there always has to be a balance. You can't just have all good things happen to you. There's also the the the, the bad things that have to happen in mm-hmm. order for you to have balance in your life. That's just how things work. That's how things exist. That's the Tao. 
the the government is definitely not completely evil. They just have a certain agenda, and they also have the military and the financial backing to to see it through, which it leads to them being very uh, imperialistic, right? And I mean, the the U.S. is still doing the same thing around the world that it was doing the 200, 300 years ago. Uh, um, you know, that can't already be done, that they haven't done. I mean, they're still, you know, expensive men have expensive taste, right? So they, you know, who said this, man? I think it was Jordan Maxwell said, you're busy looking at the girl, you know, sitting across <coughs> from you on a bus or in the mall, you know. Oh, man, she likes, she's cute. While these other she's men... Right. the She's nice. She's cute. But while these other men, who the people light. who are really controlling things, they have their eyes on the diamond <laughs> mines in Africa. You it's know what I mean? Good. So it's like expensive men have expensive taste. We can't quite fathom what the Verizon's agenda is, but the people who are in control of Verizon, they know exactly what they want. They know exactly why they want this net neutrality thing to go through. And are they really so unpredictable, though? Not unpredictable. They've known their plan for a while. No, I mean, like, is their taste really that far above us? I think so. I, I mean, how, we talked about this before. How can one person, one man, be worth $3 billion? You know what I mean? Like, how can the Koch brothers have a total monopoly on orange production in Florida and, and you know, control the orange juice business? Like, how can one person be worth $10 billion? Like, that's enough money to... Shelter homeless people in the oh. state of Virginia, you know, right. in all the whole state. And, and you, you wonder, you like, what your, kind of, you can cut your fortune in half and still be one of the richest and people in the world. What kind of proclivities does that person have when they're so rich and powerful? Like they say, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Expensive taste. You got Shadow of Mordor, right? And you're like, yo, as soon as they leave, I'm gonna crack the plastic cellophane on that, popping that into the PlayStation Four. They're not worried about Shadow of Mordor. They produced the, the game. You know what I mean? They own the company that the production company the made it. You know, look, they're looking at games they want to release five years from now. You know, I think I think that's true, man. And there's a there's a point to what Verizon's trying to do, and we have to fight against it, man. You have to know so it's what, expensive you taste. You also need to know your your place. You have to know your place in the world and where it is that you want to go and what it is that you want to accomplish. You know, why are you here? What is it that you want to accomplish in this life? What are you contributing to this world? Are you just changing? Are you just changing? Are you just changing? Are you asking me? <laughs> like, I don't have a good answer. Hold At on. the end of the day, it doesn't matter what they decide to do. Because you you have to you have to decide what it is that you're here for. Mm -hmm. Because you only have this little period of time that you're going to be here. A blinking. So you have a, you have a child. A you have a legacy. What is it that you are going to contribute to this world? Or are you just taking from it? And if you're just taking from it, then how can you demand to have anything? How can you demand to have anything, um, you know, specified to your particular needs? What are you giving back to? I mean, as far as this system, I'm giving back was, my I'm blood and labor you. and sweat. I'm just I don't saying you. Know, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying. Oh, she's saying you. Yeah, you're saying you. Right. Like, <laughs> like, no, yeah, D. What do you? What are you? You're a lazy huh? motherfucker. Okay, D. You ain't giving back enough. You ain't giving enough. back shit. You ain't giving back enough. I don't see any dirt on your knees. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm not gonna. I mean, yeah, like it's it's great having the internet. Do you guys remember though that we used to live without the internet? Nope. Yes. And I, I don't I want do, to. but it was a lesser time. I used to get lost. I used we were to so pull primitive. Up, pull out my map on the back of yes, my car. Yes, but like, then you knew how to read a map. Step, and you knew if how you to couldn't play around. Clash of Clans, you'd be hurt. That's internet at play. Clash of, I'm fairly now, Clash of Clans is not essential to the human survival or your human experience on this earth, you but you enjoy it. that everything on this phone is programmed to make you react a certain way? This is a control mechanism. Oh, it's definitely so a control mechanism. It's like, I really don't, if you take it away, like, there's been times when my phone was broken or something, it was the best times of my life because no one's bugging me about anything. I don't care if you liked my picture. I don't care. I don't care if, uh, if you tag me in some shit. I don't care. Like you, you're not calling me. The you're not and I care me. either way. You're leaving me alone, and mm -hmm. I'm at peace, and I'm contributing my time and energy to what it is that I'm trying to do in life. And there you go. Like you used to say, the trick is not to carry the way. Whether you post those pictures or don't, it's not really important to your experience. My phone is saying though, no there is, demand, is this if is there a is tether. No demand, I'm with you on that. Then though. you can't. Then, then, then it doesn't matter what somebody wants to do. You create the demand. Mm -hmm. You create the demand for everything that you hate. 
Everything that you say that you don't like, you dislike it, you create that demand. You know what I mean? You don't like being being pose, uh, poisoned by food companies? Well, stop eating the damn poison. It's that simple. You don't like... <laughs> You don't like that, oh, well, it's they're going to change simple. the internet and, and, and make it the it's way they want It's not that simple. There are nuances to it. Some people can't afford to change their eating habits, you know. Some people can and you just say, don't. You say that, but have you ever tried? I'm not saying me in particular. I'm it's talking like, about other but that's people. The thing. It's difficult. We, you, we always assume that, that oh, I can't afford this or whatever. You know what? There there has been times where I sat so there. A lot of people, really sometimes the, the only thing they have access said, to is the local if I, giant. If I were to, to get even, out of my situation, mm-hmm. if the I were to leave store. my situation right now, my comfy situation, and go into what it is that I think I could afford, guess what? I could still eat exactly the way that I'm eating now. I could. You don't ever hang You don't ever hang You have to run that experiment because life is a little more complicated. Bernie Sanders even talked about how being poor is expensive. But how, like, if you look at, like, say, the impoverished neighborhoods, they don't have giant, they don't have Wegmans or, mm-hmm. like, Trader Joe's. They have those corner they shops. Have corner shops. And the corner shops, the milk right there is five bucks, man, compared to, like, three ninety nine or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two ninety nine. But once and say again, you don't have a car to get to Once again, places, are, or, you, are you creating a demand? Or public transportation. You are creating a demand because you're, <clears throat> you're saying that, oh, well, I have no access. Uh, but they can get out. They can you get can, out, though. You can damn sure get on that train and go somewhere else if you wanted to. But you don't want to put forth the extra effort. You don't want to put forth the extra. The idea extra, is always easy to talk few from another perspective to, to about somebody an, else's place. To go to another area to put the little extra bit of time yeah, but, but to make a example, change. For example, if you look at Hurricane well, Katrina, time, though, a lot of the people couldn't leave that situation. They couldn't get out. They couldn't even though they knew a storm. Was even coming. they knew a storm was coming because they couldn't afford it, and they. Just, you know what? I, I can tell you something right now, just from personal experience, that my family came from a very bad area, a very bad area. In, in DC and my my parents decided to make a change my parents decided that they didn't want us to grow up there anymore that and my my siblings were born there you know what I mean my parents decided that they wanted a different life and they and they left and they didn't have anything they didn't have a whole bunch of anything mm-hmm. they had what they had and they decided you know what I don't want this anymore it's the same thing that immigrants do immigrants do the same exact thing we're all immigrants when you think about it you know what? I don't want to live here anymore. I may not have anything and I may struggle where I'm going, but you know what? I'm going to have to go through that to get to what it is that I want to do. And that is the thing. No matter what the issue is, you got to you got to go through that but struggle. But if somebody first. offered to you tomorrow, they said, "Stephanie, listen to me. I can give you a place to live. You can go to I don't know, anywhere in the world, some European country, right?" You can go there and live. You just gotta get up and go. You got, but you gotta go tomorrow, right? First of all, Pack up I and have leave. no interest in going to a European country. No, maybe conditions were bad for them to leave, but it takes a lot of courage to get up and leave. You know what I mean? Maybe the economic conditions also, were so bad where they were that they had to go. Like we have to, we they have to, to agree that it's not as simple as oh, I decided to do this because it'd be exciting I, I to go guess, live in Prague, but right? I'm but sure reality has can always I just pick offered up and go and live there. Sometimes I'll always offer in different order, challenges in order, if you for want a person the to do something. That you want, if you want those changes that everyone preaches about, okay, you have to step out of your comfort zone. You can't be people comfortable. People love comfort zones. People so always step out of comfort zones, zones, and often people end up sleeping behind the uh, in the fucking trailer parks, right? Like out on the grass or in the fucking woods. I'm saying, like, I'm just saying, like, out people. The grass. You know what I'm saying, like. People are homeless. <laughs> All those homeless people we were talking about earlier today, we're how many of them were people who had a who made a decision? And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna change my life and ended up under the bridge. Let's talk I'm about I'm just saying, like this that there is a potential for that. And to say that that potential doesn't exist and to say that people can't make those decisions or, or just make a decision and things will work out, it's not Okay, first of all, I there was a time in my life where I did work with the homeless in Northern Virginia. And there has been mm-hmm. times in my life where I was the homeless mm-hmm. in Northern Virginia. And I can sit here and tell you that all of those are choices. To be behind somebody's, um, to, to live behind somebody's dumpster is a choice. To, to stand As around, opposed to what? To stand, around, to stand around with a sign, you know, asking for money is a choice. These are all choices that you make. So... Once again, this goes back to what it is what is it that you want out of life? What is it that you are trying to contribute? Because no matter what the issue is that pops up, you have to be able to step out of your comfort zone and fight for what it is that you want. So we are all we are all uh, standing we are all on, on our on our knee protesting in a sense. If if it if that is something that you want, 
If you are willing to be like, you know what? I don't care what all these millions of people are saying about me taking a knee. Mm-hmm. If 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 you are able to say, you know what? I'm I am strong enough to 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 take care of things on my own. Then you do it. Mm-hmm. Then you just do it. You know. But if you're if if you are relying on a system to make things work for you, good luck. That we system was not made system. for you. The the point but of we're the all system, relying on it. The point of the system is for you to do your job, to do what they tell you to do. You are here for, to keep that lever going. And if you Human can't keep that lever going, right? then there is no point for you. They said somebody said how it's, much is your it's life more worth nuanced, control? It's more complicated, man. Control. But I, I hear what you're saying, stuff. I hear what you're saying, but it's definitely more complicated. It's, Control oh, the country's money supply, control their food supply, you control the people. And we're all dependent on money and food, which makes us dependent in itself on the system. Well, maybe you should stop being dependent upon money and food. That's easier said than done. You're dependent on money. You're dependent you know, on those I grocery stores. Even though you shop vegan, you do, uh, you're dependent on those grocery stores to be open. I do so hear the sun gazing makes I'm it so you don't have to eat. because I'm forced in a situation where I have to be. But and your I'm comfort forced, zone pre- prevents you socially. from stepping outside of that and farming all of your own food yourself. Right, you you enjoy going home. I enjoy going home in my house and turning on my TV. That's a comfort zone, you know. Like Knowing that my son is upstairs in his room, safe in the bed, you know, I enjoy that. To them. It, safety. It's safe, easier said. To step out. I'm gonna make my own. It's on own the Maslow's <laughs> hierarchy make a of needs. Or something. Safety is on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Safety is. Safety they, they, is look, see, Jay should have told us. We safety made is some an illusion. We are not safe. None of us are safe. <laughs> None of us are safe. Like that could be a bomb that blows up outside that window right now, and that, that, that's it. Think about any time you're in there a public is, there space. Is, there there is there is value to having the relative expectation of safety. Oh yeah, like there's value to having that, and that, that can zone. change how you live your life and how the decisions you make in your life. Having a reasonable expectation that you are safe, <laughs> whether or not you are safe, safe, like whether or not there's, I don't know, whatever extreme exuberant situation you can think of that that can happen, you know. But there's value to you know having a reasonable yeah expectation that Ooh, you're going to be okay. Who is who is valuable to? To you, your children, it, and your family. Is it? Is it not? Who is benefiting? Is from it, it not? Are you benefiting from it or is yes, someone else? Yes, I am. The from fact it? that yeah, like I feel you're I feel from a, an I illusion. feel here. I feel a degree of stress when I drive my car and I don't have car insurance because accidents happen. But when I do have car insurance. I feel safe. I feel safer knowing that if some shit did happen, I would be covered. Good like there, hey, there good is analogy, a, but I know he's working for Geico. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You say five dollars in car insurance. <laughs> hey man, Geico, do you <laughs> hook you <laughs> up though? I ain't gonna front, man. Yeah, yeah. What up, Flo? I feel you. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good analogy though. But it's it's true. You like there is, a, there is a there is a there is a change. It's a change in how you drive. It's a change in the the the, the route you take home. Right, it's a change in all of those things. Like you might not want to hop on ninety five because people are fucking crazy out there, Jim. You know, I'll, working in uh, social work, I've always been told that we are one tragedy away from being homeless. Yeah. And mm-hmm. whether that's like a no car money. wreck, whether that's a cancer diagnosis, or foreclosure, losing your job, or whatever, anything really can put you down that path. So, like, yeah, like, and th- those are just normal day to day stresses outside of having to be stressed out about, like we said, to be in the cast, the holiday season. Thanksgiving, Christmas, it's like, these man, it's just a big ball of fucking These are all imposed stresses. Yeah. You don't have to have these stresses. We don't. That's the thing. Just we don't. Like, I mean, if you meditate enough, you sure. Like, none of that's going to bother you. Societally, you do have to have those stresses. You don't have to have a car note, but you need a new car to get from A to B, you know? So that's just society and the way it works. You have Maybe to have those stresses. you don't stresses. need to go from A to B. I think it just sucks being in America, man. We need to It depends on what A to B is. It depends, man. It depends. What it else depends. do we want to talk about? We, we I was trying to segue a while ago. <laughs> I was trying to segue a while ago. We have ago. not been on topic. This Look, we're running this up, on, we're we're running up on two though. hours, all right? So we can wrap it up. Uh, you want to wrap it up? We're going to keep going. edit the mess we get, out of what, this. What's the last thing we want to talk about? We could, uh, we could wrap up the last, uh, wrap it up in the next 10. Didn't we want to talk about something else? Sexual harassment? Kyle and Kyle and Nick. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. That's going to be another two hours. Yeah, shit. We can keep it short if y'all want. Right? Y'all don't want to cover I just want to, I do want to talk about it. Let's do it. Look, go ahead. Go Might ahead. Might as well. Man. It's not going to be relevant three weeks from now when we do the next episode. Second. It'll be relevant, but. So, <clears throat> Terry Crews came out and finally accused his uh, assaulter, assaulty. Is it? Is, is Terry Crews the assaulty? Oppressor. 
Yeah, it's somebody who assaulted them and grabbed his genitals. It, gra- it grabbed Terry Ch- Crews' genitalia. Um, and they didn't... I, I remember they played the video. I don't have the guy's name. But the thing, the big bombshell is he dropped... Because we all heard this story before. But he dropped the executive's name. He did. Dude, dude. Who like, did it. No pun intended, but how big a, a pair of balls do you have to That's have? That's a pun, to though. I'm sorry. Right. To, to hey, grab come on, Terry You can't say no pun and then talk how about balls. How big a pair of balls? Yeah, you yeah. gotta have to <laughs> grab Terry Crews' balls. For one, real, man. Them balls are bigger than you. I mean, probably not a big one yeah. because... Maybe the, the testicular big. fortitude. Yeah, that's some testicular fortitude for that guy. <laughs> right Just but because someone's large. That's the mean. culture of Hollywood, right? And maybe that guy. I don't know think, about what I would mess with him, Terry. You know what I'm saying? Dude, maybe that guy. Through that's you. the thing. Like, so, so, all right. So when we were watching, or uh, damn it, I can't remember what's that guy's name who he was who was interviewing him. Um, uh, Michael Strahan. Yeah, Michael Strahan. So he was being interviewed by Michael Strahan. And Terry Crews uh, pretty much talked about the, the incident in which he was pretty much sexual. I, I have to say it was sexual harassment, like at a party he was with with by a powerful casting uh, director, right? And a guy who was done casting for big names like like Adam Sandler and Eddie Murphy and and some other big names. Like this guy is lead in the industry, so he comes up and he has got a bug up his ass or whatever and he starts fucking with Terry Crews so grab he, he keeps saying he was grabbing his junk like in grabbing, the middle of the party grabbing his genitalia grabbing his genitalia even after he said stop even after he said stop and even after he pushed him and even after he like oh, bucked on. at the dude See, now this like that's a, that's the a tricky part Does he Terry Crews look Terry Crews is huge he bucked at this guy and the guy was just like <laughs> like he laughed it off the guy might like, have been drunk Maybe this is the culture you that the executive was used to. <laughs> I think might you been, have to be. High. You had to be high. Shit. It might be the culture that the executive is used to. He's probably done this before. You know, like like you I know, said, people on drugs do things that are. Let the investigation really take place. That's what I was thinking. Man. But but this goes back to a, a but topic that we excuse? covered a couple a couple weeks ago. No, which is excuse. like etiquette as far as like um, female attraction goes, which is like, can Terry Crews really be? Sexually assaulted. Yes, right. Can you imagine Terry Crews assaulted. saying "Stop, no, or don't"? Yes. Stop, no, I don't. Think that anybody. Now it can happen. I'm not saying it can't happen, but Terry Crews himself pointed out in the interview that he pushed the guy to the other side of the room or whatever it was, pushed him up against the shelf. Terry Crews would beat the shit out of this executive. Like he can, can he be ex- assaulted? Like can Terry Crews claim assault, sexual assault? Or, and when you will, people take him seriously for that. Right, I want to see a picture of this executive. I'm not saying like on a right or wrong cool. level that it didn't happen, but but it's also part of when the, you look at the it's perception also part, of part it. Part of the power struggle, the mm-hmm. power dynamic as mm-hmm. well. Like for example, Louis C.K. who was you know recently outed for masturbating with you know, like that, women and that, stuff. That, that was he crazy. Asked, he asked for their consent, and they said yes. Mm-hmm. And then later on, you know, like, oh, he, that's freaky. He, like well, but the, the thing is, later on, he, he, apolog- he apologized. He said, you know what? Like, I that. Even though I asked for their consent, they said yes. I have a higher power than they do. So really, it's not consent. Mm-hmm. He kind of forced them to say yes. But that's the you thing. I mean? So that's that's what gets me, right? So yes, I understand that a hundred percent. And if you, but that's is a tricky part. If you're a man in power, like in what way? If that's not, if you can't ask for consent, and you can't, and, and sin is not com- implied, how was consent gained? We're gonna say, well, by grabbing my balls, I guess. We're gonna see like <laughs> we're gonna see a bunch of other actors and whatnot come out and accuse this guy. Yeah, he sexually assaulted me too. You know, he grabbed my butt. You know, like, weren't we talking about this a couple weeks ago? Where like, can a man be sexually assaulted? Like, if you're in a restaurant and a random woman grabs your butt, like a woman, if a dude grabs a butt, you can go to the owner or whatever your boyfriend. He this dude grab my butt. This is outrageous, and you you go your heart will go out to her. Like, man, I can't believe you would do some stupid shit like that, right? Like, but if this is executive grab Ted Cruz's butt. Terry Crews just turned around and punched him in his mouth. You know what I mean? Like, the, the problem solved, right? Exactly. Hey, not okay, problem solved. Boss. Not problem solved. Like, if he did punch the guy, we you have another situation. Job. You right? know what? And Terry Crews might have committed <laughs> career suicide with this. We don't know how deep this guy is interconnected into the Hollywood scene. Now that he name dropped the guy, it's one thing Actually, to that, tell the that story. Actually, that kind of ties into the whole uh, um, Simmons thing, mm-hmm. Russell Simmons thing. Because Russell Simmons emailed Terry Crews 
uh, uh, saying, "Hey, uh, it's all right." I saying got my the guy, the guys, before. no, no, he's saying like the guy's a good guy. Just kind of let this thing go, mm-hmm. right? And that's what you sent to me about. And Terry Crews put that on blast on uh, on Twitter. And was and saying, Russell Simmons probably had fuck, business no, connections. I'm not saying long history I'm not gonna guy. I'm not gonna let, push this under the rug. This is something that needs to be like dealt with. This mm-hmm. is something that needs to be brought attention to. I mean, as far as the question, look, we all know, yes, a man can be sexually assaulted. Of course. I, there's no question to that. Can it, can Why? It be, can it the, be reason, se- the reason there is no question to that is because sexual assault is really as simple as being touched in a sexual way, which you didn't want. Can, and can if you a be guy, more sexually if a assaulted woman by a woman be or by touched, a man? It doesn't matter. Well, if you're as, touched, as a, no, as it a doesn't man. matter. It doesn't like, matter. If, if, if a woman grabs your butt versus a record executive grabbing your butt, who's a guy... Which one is the worst sexual assault? Like, is there levels to this shit? Or Depends is it like, they're both the same? It's a spectrum, dude. It depends if you're gay. If you're gay, I'm sure the woman grabbing your butt's a lot worse. If you're not, if, if you're if you're straight... Can a woman sexually assault a man? <clears throat> uh, okay, yes, I guess, sir. yeah, she can. Yes. It's, yeah. It's some, it's some like, she touched my butt. It's, not, it's a weird question. She don't it's have like, to be answer it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like... Using that example. Well, she, she touched my butt that hurt? And she pinched it? Has a like, woman, well, I mean, like, I just never, don't get it. It's she never thrown herself on you? I was ready for my wife. I'm like, see, all the time. I'm like, it's kind of weird. It, there is, a, it's a dynamic to it. It's the same thing in principle, well, but it's different. Imagine going through that like every single day that you're constantly harassed. Like, I can't even do my hair without being harassed. There's always some. Just because people like boom, 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 get out of the bathroom. No, there's, there's always some. <laughs> yeah, they be juice, Steph. You got a lot of hair, Steph. You probably be in the bathroom for like there's two hours. That might be sexist. That's being really, really, harassment really, she talk about. Really That's harassment right now. <laughs> no. I'm talking about. I need about... to use the bathroom. <laughs> you got a family of five. You said no, yourself. Wait. The other day, I'm walking right. into the into the preschool, and I have, you know. Cyrus on one hand, and Devon, he still likes to hold my hand, mm-hmm. so he's holding my other hand. Oh, right? he's so spoiled. This is yeah, Devon right. spoiled. Devon spoiled, isn't he? Hello, Go ahead, we're drop walking, it on the cast. We're walking into the preschool, and a parent, like a you know a male parent, a father there, he stops in the middle of the street, you know, and he's like, and he says to me, he like calls out to me, he's like, oh man, I had to stop what I was doing because you, you're just so you're just so distracting. The way you walk is so distracting or something like that. And it just, I, it was really offensive because it's like, first of all, that's rude to say. Mm-hmm. It's rude. It's not, it's, that's not a compliment. And then You weren't a little I'm bit, here, a I, little bit like. And, not, that's, and that's a problem. It's like if someone, and I think where men can get the wrong impression is that some women would find that as a compliment. And it's usually the ones that are kind of insecure with themselves already. No. Because we should have had you, you here a couple weeks ago. Is this is nuance? Like, is it what he said that was offensive, or the fact that he said something? Period. That was offensive. I mean, it was offensive and all around because first of you all, didn't my find children, a little bit of my children are here with me. You just disrespected me in front of my kids. What if he just said, which "Hey, is, ma, I just want to tell cool. you that you're beautiful today, and um, well, if, hope if you have a nice day." A parent here, like. Well, he got to take his job. Okay, I'm not going to defend the guy who you said it's, got it's, on your nerves. It's it just, but like if, if you walk by, said, "Man, look the jelly on that roll." Like that'd what, be a little bit offensive. This is why know? I think we needed a female perspective on this because, like, something like that, I do have questions about. A couple like, weeks ago, we had a cast wait, wait, about. We're not here for you to interacting with women. To just have something to look at. Cat call and stuff too. What? Agree. But then kind of aren't you? So that you have something to look at. Agree. Because you have we women who existed before you. I, I'm not existed. saying that you're you guys are sexual objects. I have heard that before too. That women actually existed before men. Yeah, I heard that before too. That theory. It scientifically, we we existed before you. I'm not saying I believe all right, it. Right, right, right. But anyway, I'm not gonna give whatever. That that's about. Down. So the fact is, yes, like that is a thing, and it's probably I agree that that situation is out of place for him to say anything catcalling a woman while she's. Uh, and I wouldn't was, call that catcalling, but I would say. For for saying that in a situation where she's walking across the street picking her kids up from school, right? So that's not really it's, that's it's a it's a bad timing. We had but you have to like understand. Well, I don't understand, but you have to look at a situation where where that would be acceptable, right? Mm-hmm. So say, and I'm not saying this is that situation, but there yeah, are okay. situations where. Things like that would be acceptable, right? Explain what you weren't a little, you acceptable. weren't a little flattered. Like if you're you were out with club. your girls, if you're out at a night, if you're out and about, night out, right? You, you and your I, sister are eating in a restaurant, and, and whether or not you're your relationship or not, there are there are countless instances in which women are flattered by 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 positive commentary for their appearance, right? 
And there's a line. Which, which is the whole I, point I agree that there's it's a, a deeper, line. It's a deeper issue. I agree there's a line, but the question is, where is that line? It's a, it's a deeper issue than that. That's I mean, that's that's almost like sitting here and trying to find <clears throat> white privilege. You have to think about where this comes from and why somebody would would be, you know, would take that as a compliment. You know what I mean? If you if you don't feel that great about yourself and you're constantly have all these, um, you know, images of what you're supposed to look like and you're right. constantly trying to fit into this, you know, what mold. you're this mold of what a woman, what is beauty, etc. Then you know you you might have some low self esteem and you might be that might be a compliment to you. But there's no. But that's not. That's that's definitely that's it's, it's completely. <clears throat> now is it more in what the person the guy says or or how the person receives it? Because he could have just been totally respectful. Hey, I just want to say you're beautiful. These are genuine questions. I'm does it come down to the to Does it come down it. to the situation? You know what? Whether you're with your kids or you your girls what? or what I would say is that first of all, you don't need to comment on somebody else's beauty. You're, I agree. What your what your what you think is beautiful I don't and agree what with that. someone else thinks is beautiful is completely different. I don't tell agree your with woman that. how beautiful she looks. You don't need to tell me how beautiful I look. But what if he I don't have a woman and I don't know if you have a then woman? Then you need to find but one and stop walking in a preschool with See, your kids. Steph, you're the type who would be like <laughs> sexual harassment. You have a whistle and whatnot, blowing a whistle. I don't know, man. Like, Damn. I, I feel what you're I saying. Like that was a bad saying, situation. I'm not, I'm not saying about like I don't feel like that was a situation where that should have been said. Like there's no it's point in you totally calling out. You, but the girls walking across the street like carrying their kids. And that's where the confusion comes in on the man's part. Sometimes men go totally over the top and <clears> take <throat> it to sexual harassment. Sometimes a man would just want to say, hey, you look nice today. And they don't want to miss that and opportunity there is that. of interaction. And there, and there are women that will call, hey, you look nice today as sexual harassment. right? Or not sexual harassment. They will call it some kind look, of a, a, a harassment. Steph right? is a beatboxer. I don't, I, don't, I don't appreciate that. Steph, I don't want them saying that to me. Steph is a beatboxer. Hey, ma, you look nice today. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just... <laughs> Steph what? is totally a beatboxer, what? dog. That's, I totally, Steph. Let's, let's Steph talk like about. Let's but talk about how women can't even be polite to men without without them thinking that it's some type of turn on. It's some type of opportunity for them. Well, for them that's, to the, that's the human interaction, the sexual interaction like, between no, women. No, no, it's, women but it's not because we're not monkeys anymore. Either. Women constantly have to not even be. They have to hide who they are to even to even go through the world without having to deal with all of this crap from from men. It's like it's like being a gazelle and and, and trying to walk through the. The, the, the yeah, but women will say that, but then turn on an episode of Housewives of New York or wherever it is and have a girl with a cleavage all pushed up out of the club, you know, and she'll be like, oh, I can't believe they did that to Sharonda on the, on the episode last night, you know, so you support that sexual imagery through news media and and through the entertainments we consume. And then turn around and say, well, I don't kind want that of, kind of attention on me. But that's not really related, what? right? That's it not, is related. Not really it's related. totally well, related. Say, because like, that's where men get their sexual influences from. But if, if I see a nice looking woman... That's where men get their sexual influences. If I see a nice looking woman... watching that. If I see a nice looking woman out in public, right? And men she has on something porn, that, that is sexually stimulating as far as imagery. And if I say something to you, you can't vilify me for that. You know what I mean? And that's where... That's where a lot of the everybody will be happy. Sexual <laughs> influence comes from magazines, television, <laughs> social media, news media. And you can't say it's not there because no, it is there. If you're talking about media in general, then yeah, I'm with you. But like men aren't watching for the most part. Men aren't watching Housewives. Okay, of but New you York can look on your you can look on their YouTube and see um, any not, advertisement. They're not even watching Fifty Shades of Grey. You can, you can, so you can look on sex. you can look on any commercial. It's not a, that men. comes on TV and see a girl with cleavage. But is that women's fault or is that, that that's men? A sexual, that's a, is that women's well, fault or is that men say, saying what they like in the culture that we live in? That's the that's the mold she was talking about just now. But a lot of this is part of the male gaze, though. G A U. Z E. Like where like a lot of these I things, like how you specified that. I, I didn't get it to after you specified it. I, 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 I knew what you were saying. Because I had to specify for these yeah. things. But again, like if a woman wears makeup, if women like decides to wear like a low cut shirt and stuff though, that's really just for her though. It's not necessarily It's not for Is you. it just for her? Now yes. this is this is really new us. Because some look, women look, will say no, no, it's not. I do that to attract attention yeah, but where I'm going. It depends but, on the woman. But, but, it depends but, on the right, woman. But, so. but that but that was, those women don't define like the whole group though. Again, like because this is this is a very patriarchal way of looking at this. again, like let me see, Steph will go to the club wearing a turn. Turtleneck and some <laughs> some long slacks. And guarantee, oh we used to men go to would the still club be together. hitting on What it, right? did I wear in mm -hmm. the club? I don't remember. Oh, men would hit on you with a turtleneck, Steph. Yeah, you just not a hundred percent. That's the thing, and that's and honestly, like, mm, that's, that's what she was saying earlier. Maybe ask you, can I see your neck? Say, damn, that is harassment. Thank you. 
Those earlobes are like, hitting yeah, that turtleneck like, perfectly. Look, it's like, yeah, you can see it. You is that a hijab? Really? Would I really say like, that for real? Mm. But, no. but that's what you she's saying, right? right so she's picking up her kids, like in this scenario, she's picking up her kids, and the guy still hollers at her. Is that too much? Hold on, hold on. I would argue that, I mean, yeah, that thing, would be but, too but, much. Like, guys are yeah. holler at a girl who's pushing a baby stroller around. Is that okay? Baby a but, month but, ago. Is that okay? Like, yeah, what's up? Right. No, that's but the thing is, if you're saying that, that a woman is wearing like a low cut yeah. shirt, right? She kind of deserves to be hit on. That's kind of like saying like someone who's been sexually assaulted. It's not that she deserves right? it, but you can't not expect it. But you can't, you can't, you can't blame it on somebody who's wearing like something. You know what I'm saying? It's like. This is oh, you might be, you might be, mine, you, might be you might be hit on by a girl. Is it the same level of sexual harassment if it's a guy versus a girl? This is what if a girl hits the on situation? you? Is she bigger than you? Girls don't hit on girls. First is she of all. bigger than you? <laughs> like that's a big question. If she's bigger than you, be like, hey, okay. nigga, I like them balls. Okay. You're like, oh, uh, I'm like what? These thank balls? you. These shaved you know balls. Like I, I, I have <laughs> been, nice I have been hit on by girls before, and it's not nearly. It's not the same. It's not the way that they don't come at it from the same way. I Maybe because a woman's coming from I, a woman's perspective. When I watch, like, when I hear some music by, like, like Young Ma or some of the things that she's saying, I'm like, this isn't even really something that would happen in real life. Like, mm-hmm. the things that you're saying. Nicki Minaj, this anybody. Is not, this is not this. You're just saying this for the crowd that you're talking to, which is not us, because that's not even how you would interact anyway. They, that's just not how women interact. Sorry. Right. It's just not. But I don't know who Young Ma is, but the, the, I feel the point you're saying where is that you don't know who that People is. put on a show to... sometimes. So the question goes, uh, my question goes back to, There, this is a nuanced topic. And is there a situation where a guy could see a girl and approach her and be like, hey, you look good today or some, express some kind of interest in her? And that's and that's why I feel like a lot of people are finding resistance in this whole uh, uh sexual harassment push and it's, it is a push that's going on right now and i think it's let me clarify i think it's definitely deserved and it needs to happen especially in the in the media industry we're dealing with but on day-to-day lives people are there's a lot of pushback from common from the common people who are not really sure where they fit into this mm-hmm. right and i'm just trying to address those questions not justifying because there's clear sexual harassment situations but there's also situations where and i'm not saying steph you have to answer I, you know what I'm saying? This is not Steph isn't the the, say, the, the be all for all women. But, you know but Steph is very important because she's come from a woman perspective, and, and we didn't vegan. have that a couple weeks ago. Yeah, she's vegan. Yeah, she's vegan. What? So, <laughs> what to do with anything? <laughs> so the question is: is like, uh, like, is there is there a, a time or a place? Is is hollering at a woman outside of the club, which I think has only been a time. I'm, I'll admit, I've catcalled. Sorry, people. I know you're disappointed in me, but I've catcalled, and it's been in the situation where we're outside a club, Adams Morgan, mm-hmm. on the street, hanging out. Are those, would I be deemed I, as a an assaulter or, or a harasser for that? It's up to the woman. It depends, I would argue, but It's I up to the know. woman and your actions when you're catcalled. I wouldn't like, holler at a chick Some dudes will follow in, the girl in, in the Walmart. street. Some dudes will talk to her while she walks fast, you know? Right. So, it's like, like, I wouldn't like, like we said before, it's etiquette. You know, it's etiquette. But... And the time and place is confusing to some people. Maybe, and it's also up to the element of chance, right? Like, maybe <clears> that guy would never see you again, right? To that point. And maybe that, that chance in time... He had his opportunity to speak, and if he didn't take it, he'd never have it again, you know. Which, Half he cat. didn't know you were going to hit him with the beatbox. So, Half did you cat. hit him with the beatbox? <laughs> no. Has cat calling ever worked, though? Yes. yes. I've done it and been successful. Mm-hmm. But... Been successful, like, what happened? Well, well that's after I was... got the number. That's after, yeah, you get the number, that's a success. That's a success. Oh. All right. But it's not like... It's pretty it's easy not, to get mm-hmm. a number. You don't well, have yeah. to do that to get a number. Well, see, a, see, that, that goes yeah. back to our different like, perspectives. Because I'm a man, and people. that's a win. <laughs> that's a win for a man. That's creepy, get a number. Get a number? Yes, women are totally, ultimately in control of the relationship, as far as I'm concerned. Because I, I, I would never see myself forcing myself onto a woman sexually or any other way, right? Like, if you don't show any interest in me, I'm not going to, you know, try to force my interest upon you. That's just how I think, all right? But... I mean, some men will, and you know, cat callings work sometimes. Yeah, you should have been here a couple weeks ago because we definitely had this conversation, man. We definitely did. It was crazy. So, um, 
And uh, you want to keep going? Y'all want to start to start to wrap this up, man? What time we at? Uh, we at two o nine. Tuesday? What? You saying? Well, don't worry. It's got... <laughs> we on Tuesday. <laughs> Damn. Damn, we started this on Sunday. Yeah, man. Uh, All right. It's, it's, it's a nuanced issue. All right. So I have nuanced. one more thing to say about the whole, and it's a, another concern I have, right? And let me know if you guys agree or disagree. But my concern is that the way the uh, these whole sexual harassment allegations are going in, in the media industry now, I feel like we're it's a bubble and that we're reaching a point where this bubble is going to burst, where at some point it's going to be some either miss some some legitimately misunderstood uh uh that interaction that has been claimed as sexual harassment or it's going to be somebody outright lies for attention or whatever their reason i i feel like at some point because of the because of the way things are coming out every week back to back to back mm-hmm. people barely even remember how we want seen at this point like and it's only because his name started it, right? Mm-hmm. But and then you yeah, got Kevin Spacey and, and John Travolta and all these other names that came out and came out. We're hearing... So it's just like... I feel like at the speed in which these things are coming out, it's just a matter of time before we hit this wall. And that wall, that 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 this bubble is going to burst. And it might be... I just don't want it to be detrimental to... So you're scared to, of like a witch hunt. An actual witch hunt. I mean, isn't it already though between and Bill Cosby and Russell Simmons, and you know, unless they actually did these things, but when a woman comes out and accuses you of whatever sexual happened assault, to a fair assault, trial, man? <clears throat> like I know I agree with all these things that you know that there are two courts: out. the law, the court of law, and the court of public opinion. Well, and you can you can be well, you, know uh, what, you know what? Like, come on now, how many times has a you know a person like in history have been accused of something that they didn't actually do and spend like you know years in prison or whatever, mm-hmm. only to be exonerated later on? I would be like, so pissed if that happened, man. I have a cousin right now. If I spent it's, it's 15 happened. years in jail and then they found out I was innocent, it's happened. Can and you like, give so, me those 15 so, years so back? So right now, like, seriously, right now, like, someone cries rape, you know, like, oh, this person, whatever, right? Honestly, even if they didn't go to court, even they went to court and he was found, like, you know, innocent, right? Mm-hmm. Just dragging his name, it, his yeah. or her name through mm-hmm. the mud, right? It, yeah, it, and at man. that point, the damage is done. Even if they're exonerated, like even if they're ruling it, so this like no one's gonna hire this guy again. Yeah, like, and that's how it is. Would I they kind of deserve I, it if you really assaulted somebody? But, but no, we're saying the though? person if yeah. that person actually did. It's like the Salem it, it witch like, trials, man. You can't just like, oh, she's a witch or he's a witch. And, like, and all it would take would be one or two of those situations that would that would hinder this movement greatly. Let me ask you a question. Look at Bill Cosby. Do you like do? How many people have come to his defense, but still, like, the public opinion is like, yo, Bill Cosby. Like, Look at Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody thinks he slept so with them kids. Did. Do you think he slept with the kids? Probably. I would like to say no, because he's, he's, a, issues, he's a rich and powerful man. He's, he's had wanted, mad issues. Michael Jackson, I think he just as, wanted as much, to, like, live as a kid. Like, I think he just wanted to be a kid. As much as Michael Jackson talks, see, the whole issue of pedoph- pedophilia is strange to me in the first place. Right, and I would like to believe that nobody actually participates in that. But Michael Jackson, in particular, could have any woman or man that he wanted in the world. Right? Not Michael any. Jackson could have slept with the most beautiful women in but the that's world. That's the thing. When you so why when do I need to sleep level, with little Timothy? When you're at that level, that becomes bullshit. But do you, that think you don't was, care but, about that. Yeah, I can have anything. So I want this other thing. You're jaded. Yeah. Like like what Stephanie said. What if it wasn't sexual? What if it was like you just thought he was a kid or mm-hmm. pretending he was a kid? What if it was a legitimate sleepover then? Like he had so many issues. If I came over, Michael Jackson had on a onesie. I'm out, Michael. I, can't I mean, meet. just think about it. Michael Jackson. Would you leave though for real? No, Michael Jackson. Entire, he's right. I'd be like, yo, can I stay in another room? Entire look. He changed. He wouldn't even speak in in his normal speaking voice. Mm-hmm. He was speaking like a child. And if you watch like the the movie of of Michael Jackson, he was he didn't want to grow up because the public opinion about who he was growing up into was was so terrible and hurtful to him that he wanted to maintain his childhood. And he barely had a childhood because he was you yeah. know a star. Mm-hmm. You know, like he had issues, and you know what? Like maybe, maybe that like that wasn't the case. Maybe he doesn't have any biological children, right? He no. does have. Those I kids think aren't. he does. Oh yeah. well, yeah, no, yeah, no, you're right, no, you're right. Wait, my what? Bad, my bad. I, I think, think he does. I think he adopted. I thought they were adopted. I thought they were. I thought they were his. Didn't he have a uh, with um, um, like, Lisa Marie? Isn't that um Esley? Lisa uh, Marie Presley? Yeah, that was about to say. I don't think that was the baby mama. I think that was. I, think I he know had he a married her. With her, but I don't think he no, they were married, but I don't 
those that had kids. We'll have to Google that one. We'll have to Google yeah, that. Real talk. But um, I'm saying, like, even if he did have issues in that regard, that does not preclude him having pedophilia issues. Like, you could have both. And that's the thing that kind of throws people. It's like, well, it throws me. I'm like, I guess. If you have that many issues, though, already, like, I, why why not? You know what I'm saying? You could have that one and a couple other ones as well. You got pedophilia. You could be into monkeys. Like, I'm just saying. Bubbles, like, no. Bubbles. He did have bubbles. I think it's really, I think it's really <coughs> sad, man. I think it's really sad what what people have to go through, and just because they I'm can't, they aren't secure with you know who it is that they who they are. But back to Bill Cosby, right? <laughs> so, Bill Cosby, he was proven. Well, no, he he pretty much admitted to drugging women, right? So that was definitely a thing. But I think it was a statute of limitations thing where it was outside of the statute of limitations. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the God but don't damn it. Sh- hey, but don't. Sh- you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the proof is in the jello. Jello. <laughs> you ain't right, dude. <laughs> God damn it, man. <laughs> because we, we almost had like forgot 30 seconds. He was selling of- pudding pops. <laughs> he was selling pudding, pop, pudding pops the last 50 years. They have a guy who's a nigga from Philly. <laughs> Damn, they was selling pudding pops for a minute. Pudding pops. Bill Cosby looked old back in 1973. Duh. I remember oh, I seen a movie right? from, uh, from. So Bill he Cosby. did admit to drugging women. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, it was like indirectly. He was like, yeah, I used to, you know, give women that would come over this, See, but I wasn't like, raping them. That's yeah, probably, everybody was like, what? that's probably a thing. Like, uh, <laughs> that's pretty much drugging women and having sex with them. Well, maybe yeah, but he the, felt like he wasn't raping them because once again that privilege because of the being, era. Of being rich and this girl's and, and who knows if the That's women right. might have consented to taking? They might not have consented to taking what they were given, but they might have been like, "Oh yeah, I smoked that joint with you," but they don't know what was on it. Or Dude, you should not be giving somebody anything. But that was the rage back then. That's what people did in the seventies and eighties. They were psychedelic. Playlins, they were on drugs. Playlins. That's what it was. Yeah. Whatever those are. But yes, that was the name of it. We, we're smoking it. He said whatever those are. AK, I haven't used those. Before. I don't know what they are. <laughs> like, look, they're I'm real like, dangerous <laughs> to being a give woman. Me some, we'll see. Right, that don't men don't me. see. Right, like if you're out in public at the club and somebody buys you a drink and you turn around, and that's just fizzing like alka seltzer. Don't drink that shit. You know what I mean? I always imagine like when people like they slip a roofie in the drink that that don't fizz up like alka seltzer tab. I don't know just how it works. Though. It might just. Dis- I think it just dissolves. It's just like odorless and tasteless. I think it might even be like a liquid. Somebody like taps a little vial with oh, some yeah. powder and puts it in your drink and shit. Dude, I don't know. Yeah, yeah right. Like who, who the hell is crazy enough to do some shit like that? Right, like, purposely. <laughs> Like There's you, some you people out there. Yeah, there are right. people who like yeah. get get off on just having a woman who's unresponsive, and that's what they have sex with. Mm-hmm. Like, that's like but that, that's, that's There's shit. a lot of there's sick people in the world. Yeah. There's sick that's people in the world. Hmm? Well, I guess uh, I guess we're about to wrap what this up, guys. Depressing end, yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't depressing. Let's talk about things we're thankful for. I like that. I'm like thankful that. for you guys here at the yeah, Intelligent Idea right. Talkers podcast. You know. Thankful for my co-host. Thankful for Steph for finally coming and uh, sitting with us. Drop thankful for knowledge. vegan tilapia. Yeah, I'm thankful for vegan products. Ew. All everything vegan. Ew. God. <laughs> I still think Steph should have made some dishes for us, but she said she didn't want to. Actually, so. no, never mind. But uh, did you agree to it? Who who agreed to you on the pitch? Who pitched it to you? And made you agree? Juice. I'm gonna Look, kick you under the table make, if you say if you agree. You can agree. make that mask. That, that your potato potato underneath the table. So. That would just be banging. I mean, just any time. If ever. I'm going to tear your shin up. You, you tell me that you agreed to what you said. I'm like, Steph, I'm like, ah. Dude, I was trying to convince her for like a half an hour one day. Like, Steph, come on. No, I'm not a chef. I don't do that. I'm not. So what kind of woman do you think I am? I don't do that. Never done this before. Yeah, like you I'm like, Kanye. I'm like, don't act like you ain't never done this before. You. That is sexist. Damn, dude. <laughs> That's some sexist shit. That's some sexist ass shit. Look, I'm thankful for uh, you know friends, family, uh, the podcast. Like I enjoy doing this podcast. Like I'm glad we got this thing started, man. We've been going over a year now, and well over a year, almost two. I think we're growing. Now. I think we're growing. You know, I think at least we have some views at some point. So yeah, we, I just want to have keep some going. dedicated followers. Yeah, like I, so. I definitely am thankful for. Uh, we do, serious. Yeah, for this whole for this whole You've thing. Been me, when y'all drop another episode. My boy, uh, he got his uh, his um, um, license to drive big rig trucks. Um, what do you call it? Uh, 
18 wheelers? Yeah. What do you call a license? You know what I'm talking about. There is a CB license? Yeah, a, C- a CDL. Oh, a CDL yeah, yeah. license. A commercial driver's license. He listens to us all the time. He be asking me, like, when are we dropping? Like, I talked to him on um, Thanksgiving, really? matter of fact. Hey, hey shout out. out yeah, man. Um, dude named Delonte. Yo, Delonte. Yo, Delonte, Delonte, Delonte hey. man. And, Yo, you know, on the road, you. he be in, like, <laughs> Illinois, uh, Tennessee, just driving all over. And he said he be listening to us, man. He said, yo, when y'all dropping the next episode? Because uh, he asked me on Thanksgiving, matter of fact. So, cool, Thanks man. Shout out to Delonte, man. And, um... Steph, did somebody convince you to cut close? Because if they did, your shin is in my target <laughs> zone, okay? I've already measured this up. Okay. So, what did y'all discuss this? We did discuss this off air. Oh, thank you for Steph cooking. I'm a lot shorter than you. I think I can get away. Mm-hmm. 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 So it's a lot. Ew, God, you guys are making me sick. Whatever, <laughs> dude. Look, whatever. Look, no, right. humans are omnivorous by nature. Okay, look, by stop the guy. We're going to have another little half an hour on this all right, all right. You get Steph started next up time. by omnivores and stuff like that. Carnivores, carnivores, <laughs> meat, freaking killing animals. I'm about to eat some tilapia. Can't believe somebody would kill another <laughs> living organism and eat it. I'm a savage. Damn squirrels. Yeah. All right, guys, but well, thank you for joining us <laughs> here on episode 29 of the Intelligent <laughs> Idea Talkers podcast. Idea Talkers podcast. Once yeah. again, I'm your host D. This is Juice. Your boy Jay. And Steph. <laughs> yeah. yeah Steph. Woo. <laughs> God damn. All right, so yep, join us next time. Throw out the beatbox. (laughs) Peace.